What's up, y'all? Welcome back. Happy Monday. Welcome back to Chill to Action on the Call to Action Network. You know me, it's your girl, Danielle, here, hanging out with my favorite co-host, Mr. Paul Denuzio. It's me. It's me. It's PLD. What's going on, everybody? Yeah, and today we have with us our favorite co-host, our favorite third to have on Chill to Action, the one, the only, Mr. Billy Belford. That guy. What's up, y'all? I'm just back again on my mission to make sure people aren't known by dumb initials. But as always, I'm here for the good ones. Anytime I'm on, it's because there's a good show. And tonight, we got a good one. You may know them from pulling random five-point questions that nobody else knows, whether from the regular Schmodown or Star Wars. You may know them from their amazing website, The Movie Guys. You may know them from putting out oddly like accurate... Uh, Predictions for the draft. Uh, it's Paul Preston and Adam Way. Hello, down, fam. Hello, you got, your you got your parade wave down. That's very nice. I like that. See, I, you know, I don't. Is that the internet wave? Is it the internet wave? Is that what we're all doing now? It's elbow, 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 wrist. wrist. Yeah. Oh, you got some so much flow to you. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I have no flow. <laughs> I approach everything with like I swing a golf club like a baseball bat. I have no finesse in anything. I throw a bowling ball overhand, like none of those things. I like that's not, no. yeah. that's not a good workout right there, the the, the bowling ball overhand. <laughs> yeah. Well I didn't tell you the only use like an eight pound ball, so <laughs> fair enough. You throw it further. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> there I there there's a there's a movie uh, uh, thing for movie people as well is like if there's a sport how long but when you're playing golf do you before you quote caddyshack and how long before you bowl before you quote lebowski Ooh. i mean it's <laughs> before the game starts. first roll second roll yeah was that before the game starts yeah i think you, yeah exactly yeah exactly you don't even need to be into it <laughs> yeah. also depends if you're playing with you're playing a guy named jesus or not and that makes it even yeah. easier to well, and you're a yeah. tremendous slouch comes up somewhere in the locker room. <laughs> <laughs> you're tremendous. <laughs> Don't sell yourself short. You're a tremendous slouch. chat there of two of my favorite people to meet at Spectacular since you're the only degenerates who spoke to be able to hang out while you're uh, <laughs> that would be Adam. Yeah. I am that degenerate, yes. <laughs> the secret's out. Uh, Kadashak is normally quoted in the car during golfing. <laughs> Seems like something that's mandatory to do. The car? He takes a car? No, that'd be great. Caddy I don't have a cart. I take a car and I just drive my <laughs> yeah. out of the, yeah. the lakes wherever I yeah. want. Carts are old cool. fashioned. <laughs> <laughs> that's right, y'all. Tonight on Show to Action, we have with us the movie guys. Woo! We have reunited the greatest team to never get to win Wait. a match. For sure. <laughs> 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 Because they were torn away from it too soon, unfortunately. <laughs> the greatest team. We all know won. if they beat Shazam, they would have won that tournament. Like, that's that's basically like Fact. if you lose to the tournament winners, that means you would have won the tournament. So okay. uh make it known here that match and my match with Tom against Deep 13, mm -hmm. you have to score 36 points to beat us. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So yeah. So just do that, and you'll beat him every time. Yeah, and so he scored 32, and, and it doesn't mean anything. No, D13 had to score the most points ever scored to beat you. That's a huge <laughs> compliment. Interesting oh. strategy, Cotton. Let's see how this works out. Uh. <laughs> well, you know what? We slow down on the ESPN. Maybe they'll get on the Ocho after the uh, article's written and everything else. Oh, <laughs> Slowdown's made for the Ocho, right? Oh, man. Yes. I know the Ocho came back. That's the best news of the week. Week. Oh God! Did you see that list yeah. of things that they're showing? It's like yeah. hammer throws and yeah, uh, log skipping. rolling. 
Yeah. Long run. Dodgeball juggling? Tossing. How is that a thing? <laughs> hey, I'll tell you what, man. Stone skipping was one that I saw, and I thought that I think that's the sport America needs right now. I mean, we oh, can't yeah. go out and do anything right now, but you know. <laughs> but it's like, think of how so gentle. If, they, if everyone just started watching that sport, just stone skipping. Like. <laughs> there will be Americans who fill up their bathtub and do stone skipping across their bathtub. <laughs> yes. And still <laughs> wager. Yeah. <laughs> Anything you can wager on will be done at some point. That's all I guess. Oh, of yeah. course. <laughs> so guys, Most degrees of difficulty. You have to skip it off the wall and stuff in the end. I'm going to let it do parkour in, it, in, it, in the tub, the stone. We we should start the America on Pause Olympics, right? Like, what what can you do inside only? We, we were all inside kids, right, at one point. Of course. <laughs> it's like, let's get creative. Like, how do you play nine holes of golf in your, you know, one-bedroom apartment? There's a way. Well, there are videos out there you can find where people recreated the Pirates of the Caribbean ride in their house because their Disneyland their trip was canceled. Oh, and they, they literally wow. have, you know, they go through the living room on a little thing and there's a guy playing the banjo. And then they oh, go into the kitchen okay. and there's the, you know, people running around the, uh, <laughs> what, what they call that, the kitchen island. They're running around that, chasing each <laughs> other like in the ride. They, they recreated the whole damn thing. It's like, screw it. We can't go. We're doing awesome. it anyway. Wow, watch the rape scene. Weird. I don't have the energy to do that. For it me. was pre rape. Pre rape. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Yeah. Uh, Jerry, uh, what was that? Tim Franco is also in the chat. Oh, that's Jeremiah's born saying water from the spout. Absolutely. We should do Drink from the spout. Yeah. And uh, I drank oh, from the spout. Jillian Marie in there. Adam and Paul both have some of the best improv and comedic timing on the Schmodown. Oh shucks! You know that's um, awesome. <laughs> it's great. It's great. I, that's all I got. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I think it's impeccable. Uh, <laughs> well, here we are, seven minutes in, and we haven't asked our first question yet. It's Danny, okay. yeah, that's what I get to. Oh, it. Nine movies, though. <laughs> I, I, I just want you to know I'm having applesauce because I heard there were snacks. I don't want to burn through this the hoard, you know, too quickly. <laughs> but it seemed like a special occasion, right? You're having uh, ice cream, right? Yeah, and, right. Uh, that's me. Yeah, that's, so. that's, that's some ice cream. Uh, I'm going with my Jack Daniels. That's uh, my <clears throat> my. Let's not, fool the audience. Yeah. Let's not fool the audience into thinking that we're not, you know, relaxed and having drinks and food. Uh, yeah. Because we are chill. This is chill to action. So we are <laughs> chilling. Yeah. And on Chill to Action, we do always like to ask the very first question that we have for Schmodown. And guys, why Schmodown? What got you into the Schmodown, and how did you start playing in the league? Hi. Oh, wait. Yeah, good question. Um, well, uh, years ago, we had our podcast on a network called the Toad Hop Network. Now, if you follow the Schmoes, you may remember when they were on the Toad Hop Network, and that's where we met, Christian and Mark. Okay. Uh, and then... Toad Hop folded because the two radio hosts who were running it got a job in radio again. They kind of started this podcast network between radio jobs. And off they went to 95.5 here in L.A. And uh, we, I built a studio in my garage, and that's where we've been doing the movie guys since. Did the whole garage studio Mark Marin thing. Um, and the Schmoes went off, and next thing you know, they started the, the Schmodown. And I kept them on my newsletter for what we were doing to where one time I sent out a newsletter, hey, here's what the movie guys is up to. And Christian wrote back, do you guys know movie trivia? And I said, <laughs> Shh. Adam and I would come and come to win. So uh, there it led to yeah, filtering us into the free-for-all last year, and it's been a year. <clears throat> nice. Ooh, sweet. Yeah. I mean, definitely oh. if it was something I discovered outside of that, I would be, like, obsessed with it. Like, I got to get in this and would have no way. But, I mean, it's just – it's just it just goes to show you like put yourself out there and do something like that. Paul had the idea to just like one, you know, Paul would get these new year's resolutions. He'd be like, I'm doing a podcast this year. I'm like, okay, okay. What are we doing? You know? And then before you know it, then he's like, okay, there's a studio here. Meet me on the uh, La Brea in Hollywood. And you go upstairs and there's this thing or whatever. And that's, yeah. But it's just like being able to say like, well, let's just do that. And then we have to make it work, you know? So <laughs> like, like last Thursday, Hey, let's do a free for all the star Wars figures yeah. in three days. <laughs> You know, yeah. yeah. We, we do. We <laughs> crank stuff up. And we're definitely going to get into that. Written. <laughs> but, you know, why don't we talk about you guys, like how you guys came together, your friendship. I mean, I mean you guys have such great oh, yeah. timing. It's obvious you guys have a great, like, 
history. Oh, Paul, I, I, I've got a great story about how I met you. Please. Paul was in a sketch comedy show in Chicago. I was there doing improv. Paul was there doing improv at Second City. And uh, I, through my comedy friends uh, that I had went to college with, my improv friends, formed a comedy troupe. And, and so I, as soon as I moved there, I went to go see this show. But I didn't know Paul and Karen. And they had been added to this group of friends that I knew. So I'm watching the show. And what was funny about it was I'm going to see my friends from college, these improviser stuff, to be you know, hilarious show. I don't know what they're going to do, but they were kind of doing a serious show. They were doing serious monologues and mask work and dance work. And so I was like, well, I mean, it was interesting and challenging. I'd come to laugh, but I can adjust. Obviously these are my friends, but then these two people I didn't know would come out because I guess they'd brought sketches that they'd written, you know, Paul and Karen as a comedy duo would come out and do a sketch and then like kill like joke, 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 like set up punchline set up, but like really like the classic sketch stuff. And I was like, those guys are really funny. And then in the middle of one of the sketches, Paul made a Harrison Ford reference that laid dead in the room, except for one voice. It was like, ha, ha, ha. I want to make sure you understand that I get that. So I'm going to be the only one laughing. Ha, ha, ha. Good joke. Good joke. You're right. So then after the show, I went up to him and I was like, I got the Harrison Ford reference. Well, thank God. And then, did. of yes. course, you know. <laughs> yeah, right? It's like, oh, what's your favorite movie? Da, da, da. Raiders of the Lost Ark. And then, you know, standing on the sidewalk for Chicago for like an hour going, yeah, but I think Alan Pakula was better, you know. <laughs> but then our first but our first movie that we went off to see together was? Jurassic Park, The Lost World. Oh, it was? Wait a minute. I thought it was. Yeah. Uh, when was Speed 2 Cruise Control? Speed oh, 2 was that. This, <laughs> this is, this is, this is the very. First thing we did as friends, because we knew we liked movies in a way that we didn't with other friends, we swore that we would be at the release, this is the, fir the Friday opening night of every summer movie in what year? That would be 97. 98? No, I think it's 97. I'm 98? no Speed and so this 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 is a summer of like speed two. It's the worst summer to try and catch everything. <laughs> so yeah, we so we caught every movie that summer. That was our big challenge. But you like so speed two cruise control has always been the big joke. <laughs> That's like and we we hustled. Paul was working in a restaurant. I was temping, and we're like. We got to do it. We 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 swore, and we'd seen them all that summer. And so I'm like, we run. We're like all run in, sweaty and tired, and everything like that. Like, oh, we made it, and then. For speed two cruise control. Hey, good job, guys. You're, 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 doing, you're doing a great job. <laughs> Whatever it is you're doing, you're killing it. <laughs> ben, ben Bateman famously had a summer where he and a friend they would go to the movie theaters and they would like watch the worst movie that was in theaters that week, or like the the movie that like had the that. like highest expectations they expected to bomb or whatever, and like yeah. watched like some terrible movies. But then uh, he's yeah. for some reason still loves uh the taking of Pelham 1, 2, 3 from that horrible summer. Of I do, too. So. <laughs> there you go. Adam's with Ben. Take the Pelham 1, yeah. 2, 3 out. Oh. John, you and ben ben as, John Travolta as Freddie Mercury? Come on. <laughs> uh, oh, my God. That's perfect, though. Yeah, I saw that in a Korean movie theater in my Koreatown neighbor, neighborhood with Korean subtitles and an all-Korean... <laughs> Like it was a room that was clearly wasn't meant to be a movie theater, but it ended up one. <laughs> <laughs> Back was there. Okay, oh. fair enough. <laughs> All right, Tony so Scott. Get in the spell down. How was your first match together? Like, what was it? Everything you thought it would be? I mean, was it anything surprising you about it? Uh, what'd you think? You first well, it, it, after the free for all, our first teams match, I mean, we'd like a redo on that one. <laughs> uh, you know, we did. I'm still struggling with the game. You know, you line me up against anybody, I'll I'll be in trivia. One on one, one on one. Game. I know. And it right from the start, it was the game that beat us in, in the, more than Inky in the brain. You but know, you know, it, it's the movie trivia that engrosses you in the showdown. But it is the game that makes you like, all right, I'm really I'm here for the long haul because there's something extra about the game, and it, whether it beats people like Paul and I or just watching how people play it, and you're like, that's just a different level, you know. Yeah, absolutely. And that's how it's been with managers now, though. Is that stepped up for you a little bit? You know, you have somebody who can interact with you more on it, maybe help you out the gameplay of it. How's that? Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, well. I mean, yeah. It's uh, it's the 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 teams thing is such a genius move. It is the extra step towards being a sport that the whole thing needed. 
that yeah. event. And I mean, I feel like, I mean, of course I'd love to play with, with Paul still, but like, if you're, if you're going to divide us up, if we're not going to play together, then it couldn't have ended up any better. Like I belong in the dungeon, Paul belongs in the den. I think everybody ended up on every team they really should be on. Like, it's really people just like, I want to play with this person. I don't care if it wins me a belt. Like let's, you know, belts one thing, but the, and that's the other thing is like beyond the, the gameplay is the sort of fun and character stuff, which is what Paul and I really dig. <laughs> oh, yeah. You know, doing bits. I mean, we pitched bits. like, we pitch bits. like five. I love your bits. Oh, thanks. <laughs> we pitched like five characters to Christian. Then he picked, yeah. you know, it's like we could have been the moguls or we could have been the, what else yes. were we? The two Robert Evans type guys. We, we were both going to dress exactly like Robert Evans and <laughs> Robert Scott, Evans guys. The whole deal, have martini. <laughs> That's still a good idea. Yeah. <laughs> if we're always drinking martini and everything. Uh, Robert Evans, God, what a great thing to imitate. That's so funny. <laughs> and then, uh, but one thing should be mentioned, that first match against Inky in the Brain was right because it Perfect. put us in the lap of Rachel Silvestrini, who is mm. a fantastic um, what's her, ambassador for the show. Yeah, so I know. to come in and play her, it was like, well, this is going to be fun. Win or lose, we're going to have a good time. And, and I think yeah. she said the same thing after a match. She said, it was the most fun matches I ever played. And so that was refreshing to hear, and uh, it was all good for me. Yeah, even though we didn't win either of those matches, those are two perfect matches. There's Rachel. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, they were just two perfect matches. It was a perfect deal to play, and and the, the Shazam match was perfect, except that we lost. But still, if you're, if you're not counting wins and losses and just look, looking at the flow of the Schmodown in terms of teams and dynamics and how things go, like, those those two occurrences there are just perfect, you know? Well, I would definitely say you're building up karma points as far as that goes. Because you've always, all of, every match it seems you guys are in are you're just this close from actually winning the match. You're having a great fun time, but you're just this close, a point away here, a point away here. It seems like karma's got to come into play at some point. You got to gotta have that switch around. It. It's got to be soon. I love what you guys are doing right now. There's, the a, certain amount of, there's a certain amount of energy that comes from the fans going, Th these people should be doing, I mean, Bateman really is kind of a living example of that, of like people being like, that guy really should get a belt. That guy really should get a, an opportunity. And, you know, and that builds up to it, so. Yeah, I think we would have lots of people rooting for us, you know, either me going for Star Wars, Paul going for singles, you know, or if we got back together. And Adam said, yeah, if you're going to lose, be funny. Be so funny. We, we, we have uh, <laughs> tried to do that every time, at least. Were so. you guys surprised yeah. that a lot of people looked at you more like as faces as opposed to heels? Because your characters, when you all were a team, were supposed to be heel characters. But there were yeah. a lot of people that were like, no, I don't see these guys as heels at all. Did that surprise you? We were constantly referred to as heels. And I'm yeah. like, I, I, I guess we're dicks. <laughs> that was we're really the... But we could be a dick, a charming dick. You know, I don't think we were necessarily <laughs> well, nefarious dicks. Yeah. I mean, that's the thing, too, is, like, we're sending out the signal, like, The Rock. Did anybody hate The Rock? But he was a heel. Uh, but, like, you know, so trying to send out the signal of, like, hey, here's all the bad guy stuff I do. But, you know, it's if it's funny, then I'm then you're laughing at me, and everybody likes people they laugh at. So you, you can't really, you know. But you it's know, like... I, you, Appreciation of that we're doing the bit. <laughs> angle yeah. might even be a better thing. Kurt yeah, angle. Kurt angle? Back, yeah. In, back in the Attitude Era, because oh he, yeah, he yeah. was so uh, hyped up and crazy. you loved him, but he was not nice or good or anything. He was, yeah, he was an asshole, but he was so fired up. You were like, I love this guy. Yeah, <laughs> so, the energy was there, and he was, and he was the perfect foil to be like made fun of because he was he always committed to whatever bit they were doing. And did a great job. Like, there's the famous bit of Edge riding on the back of the cards, and it's like this guy's a dork, and like, and like Angle's like looking at pictures of himself, and he's like, this is great, and you're like, and then he like looks like and he finds he's like, ah, and it's like, and they would do so many bits like that, and, and, and Angle was always the perfect foil, for and that's it. charming and hilarious, but he's a bad guy. So I thought that's kind of the bad kind of bad guy we were, charming and hilarious. But well, that's guys. that's a good kind of thing because you don't want to have like just all one kind of bad guy and one kind. I mean, there's the, the heels, the fuck yeah. you, or anything else. Yeah, the funny bad guys that make it make it. Maybe more of a. Uh, also, you guys came in when like two of the most popular characters in the Schmodown were heels. So if you were a heel, you were going to be popular. Yeah. Because you had you had Andrew Guy and you had Mike Kalinowski, who were supposed to be hated heels that people loved. So. <laughs> what does it say about us that we end up trying to root for the uh, heels? I, 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 I do love America. the art. The art to it, though, like when you watch these wrestlers and stuff, and you're like, how they capture Crowder Kalinowski on the mic after. 
that the last match. I mean, that's just like that's what it's all about. Is like it, it, that 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 sort of playing and playing and playing at a at a point or or an attitude or whatever, and being able to improvise with that and stuff. When you see wrestlers do it, you're like. I, and you know, and that's a big part of the schmo down. It's like, yeah, I want to get better at that part too. You know, like <laughs> that's how they guy pull into the uh, goodwill hunting with the, it's not your fault and hugging him. <laughs> that was, I, that I, would I, be a good parody. Yeah. Yeah. That was good. That was good. He was, it would be fun. <laughs> um, but <laughs> excuse me. So now you nice. have, way to cough into your hand or your elbow there. Oh, so you got that on. Well done, no, sir. Not in hand. I got to do the elbow. Yeah, we do. I'm not corona. I have Finally, out. dabbing serves a purpose. <laughs> oh, <laughs> finally. It's got, I think God. everything's come around. This virus has brought everything around. We've had this technology to, to talk to each other from home. You know, it's like the virus is like, guys, you're, you're not making the most out of yourself. You know, maybe that's a conspiracy. Yeah. Maybe like these kind of technology companies wanted this to happen so they could take advantage of it. Yeah. <laughs> Big know. internet. <laughs> that sounds like a bad movie, actually. It sounds, like <laughs> sounds like a 1998 movie, is what it sounds yeah. like. <laughs> I saw that when we first started. Hey, Paul, you want to go see The Net on Friday night so that we see all the movies that came out this year? I love Dennis Miller movies. <laughs> <laughs> You're a fan of Murder at 1600, too? Yeah. <laughs> I believe In the category of Dennis Miller movies. Dennis Miller movies. <laughs> What's the Tales from the Crypt one he did? Bordello of Blood. Bordello of Blood. Blood. Bordello of Doom. <laughs> Blood, yeah. Oh, yeah, it's Bordello. Yeah. Oh, my God. Him. Dennis Miller. <laughs> and there was another horror thing he did. Uh, the, the Dennis Miller Show, I think is what it was called. That was yeah. uh, oh, horrible. Sorry, not horror. Kind of horror. Yeah. Huh? I mean, tomato, tomato. <laughs> oh, oh, that. Now, right. do, you know, do you know the story of Jim Carrey in that show? Did, wasn't that the one they did the live feed? Paul, do you well, know Dennis Miller Live was different than the Dennis Miller Show. Dennis Miller okay, yes, Live, Dennis Miller when Live. I first moved out here to L.A. It was radical. It was I went radical. to see that show every Friday because it's live. It's a half hour. You arrive, you know, audiences, sometimes it's a long ass day. But this one, you got like there like an hour before. It was a half hour shoot and you were gone. So like under two hours, you could see Dennis Miller and whoever he has. And that Jim Carrey appearance is one of the funniest things ever you'll ever see. He, uh, should I just and describe it, what it was? It, it, yeah, yeah, I would say so because it's, it's fascinating. fascinating. Because that was a live show. Yeah, yeah. It, it, they had to send a camera to the middle of nowhere to shoot Jim Carrey for I don't know what he was shooting. Dumb but. and Dumber, and he's ah. uh, it, it Dumb and Dumber. I can't be right. Can I? Was that then? Well, that seems like it was way before I moved here. Anyway, uh, he was yeah. shooting something. And, yeah, something. And uh, he he's remote. He's remote, and he's talking to to Dennis and uh, talking all about the new project. And about how uh, he's going to change his name to Kaching, with like Prince changed his name to a symbol. He's going to change his name to a dollar sign. So my new name's Kaching, but I haven't let this fame or money or anything go to my head. Then a guy comes on camera from the side with a sandwich, and he's like, "Hang on a second, Dennis." And he looks at the sandwich and he goes, "Well, I don't know if it's going to be too much trouble around here for one of you guys to get me some Dijon." Fucking monster! And he kicks the he kicks the his tray out of his hands, and he says the line I quote all the time. He says, "I'm going to choke you now, <laughs> and don't you dare defend yourself." And then he kills the guy, <laughs> and he says, "You're saying, Dennis." <laughs> you know, it's like, I, wow. I'm on the ground laughing. So oh, and then every week with that, they had you know Robin Williams on, or the South Park guys, and. Uh, Dave Grohl and on and on. I just went down and I watched every every Friday. It was awesome. Wow. Yeah. That's cool. yeah. So I made up for Bordello of Blood. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Barely, I think. <laughs> we can swear, right? Because I just broke yes. it. Yeah. Okay, oh, yeah. Right we should have asked ahead of time. I don't know. We'll edit it and post it for you. I'm just kidding. Yeah, we'll bleep it. <laughs> That's what we got. At. Kelsey, that's your job. Kelsey, by the way, Kelsey and our, our favorite sweet Kelsey in the background, taking care of time, taking care of comments, keeping us online. So we do we gotta do weather on the fives? What are we doing here? Yeah. <laughs> Let's throw it to Kelsey for what's going on on the traffic today. <laughs> what do we got down there, huh? There is no traffic. Back to you. <laughs> yeah, there is no traffic. <laughs> oh and we, we have to we have to save the jobs of our uh, traffic reporters. I mean, that's yeah. uh, 
Ah, there you go. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Kelly. Back to you, Paul. Back to me. <laughs> All right. Well, you know what? A question I had now for Adam specifically was the Star Wars that when you came out to the tag team, and all of a sudden, next thing you knew, you were... <laughs> <laughs> next thing you know, you're at a Star Wars match. <laughs> oh, yes. Yes. Yeah, sorry. <clears throat> what were you saying? <laughs> you were just Star Wars magic. Right? Yeah, no, that was a fun, uh, you know, and in fact, I would say it's Paul that, <sighs> Paul was instrumental in there you go. supporting me because he's so supportive. Oh, there oh no, sorry. Are we done with Adam time? Is he still going? Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> no, I mean, I, uh, <laughs> we would, you know, Paul and I were so close. Well, I would go to the studio and Paul would be there too. And uh, no, so we would go to the studio and we would play the game. Now I'm a, Adam's, I'm a going on. Adam's talking. He's doing a whole thing. I'll be in there in a sec. <laughs> right, sure. I'm sorry. Go ahead. And, and I just feel like we communicate really well. We, uh, you know, Paul and I are just, uh, you know, we're very, uh, we can finish each other's um... sandwiches. Sandwich. <sighs> sorry. Uh, oh. So sorry. Any, anyway, 58 here. <laughs> <laughs> so I know a lot about Star Wars. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, go ahead, Paul. You talk. <laughs> no, I'm uh, I'm obsessed with Star Wars, but you know, you look at uh, Alex Damon, and it's like, uh, and especially when Paul and I came in last year, they they've now recycled questions. When we came in last year, they were at. The far end of Caddyshack questions. You weren't getting pool or pond questions. You, know, you, were, you were getting, you know, what was Smale's daughter's name and stuff like that. But um, but so the Star Wars questions uh, were difficult when you watch the matches, but in the studio when one would come up, I was always getting them right because I knew Star Wars pretty well. And Paul kept pushing me to, to, to do it. And I was like, I don't know, I'm going to get slaughtered by one of those guys. But um, finally, when the draft came around and we realized that there was going to be more Star Wars matches and that people were drafting people just for Star Wars mm -hmm. and that nobody knew I could do Star Wars. And I was like, well, and, and Paul said, you know, you know, wherever you go, you should you should go for Star Wars now. And so I told Kaiser that after the draft, which I, I, and I was shockingly drafted very early. And I was like, that's a tremendous leap of faith. Uh, and so and that sort of got me all, you know up about like you know like look he's got this faith in me so i just ran up to him at the draft and, uh, and i go you just won the draft man and he go and then i told him i could play star wars also and that he had me in two categories so anyway yeah. that was fun three if you're gonna so you what gonna, other category are you gonna uh, be oh yeah well yeah teams and that, that hasn't been announced yet who you're playing like they meant that the draft that you might be teaming with zipper i don't know if that's something that's going to come to fruition yeah that's that's my teammate that is i haven't played yet yeah hey. uh, yeah we We've talked a lot, and we've got our team name and everything, so that that'll be happening. And okay. I think we play pretty good together. Sweet, very cool, very cool. Yeah. Yeah. You got oh. before John Roca. This is very impressive. We we got these these two guys on here. Not everybody <laughs> was drafted before John Roca. Drafted before John. Roca. <laughs> oh, we were both drafted before Roca. You're right. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay. He was in the fourth round. I mean, come on. Fourth round, yeah. Fourth <laughs> round. Left then? I mean, come oh, on. Gosh. Some people want to win. What are you going to do? <laughs> <laughs> but the idea, the idea that the, the kid in fourth grade that was obsessed with Star Wars, when it, well, I mean, it was okay to be obsessed with it then. You know, Star Wars came out like in my lifetime. I'm, you know, uh, of advanced age, let's say. But I was at the, I was at the ideal age to be a kid when Star Wars came out. So like, that's been my thing. Oh. So the, at points, you know, it's okay when you're a kid and you get a little older and you're like, I still like Star Wars. And people are like, yeah, I'm not supposed to like Star Wars anymore. And then Star Wars went away and Star Wars came back. And you definitely weren't allowed to like Star Wars when it came back because these movies were terrible. They were for kids, all this sort of stuff. And I was like, oh, I still like Star Wars, you know. <laughs> so, you know, for the showdown to indulge that, I'm like, I get to go and just shout how much I like Star Wars and win accolades if I know it better. I'm like, all right, it's you know, kind of a dream come true for yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. That's perfect, man. Yeah, you already said I'm that we, we went to movies together in 1997. Let's not fool anybody. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I am 32. Oh, that's right. <laughs> oh. I have a very important Star Wars question for both of you, actually. Oh, Where yeah. does episode three rank for you? Paul, Paul, <laughs> Paul Benizio, shut up. Oh, Where does episode three rank for you? In the all-time 
Paul. You're trying to shut him up, but he can't. You can't get at him. Try. Stop it, Paul. <laughs> you can't try. Stop you can't do it. Can. Oh, that one right there. <laughs> Where's it? Okay. Well, let's see. Um, Star Wars: Empire Jedi. That's my one, two, three. Hmm. Um, then probably Rogue One. Ah. Then uh, I don't know. This, it, it, I, I don't know. When it gets to double digits. There's a lot of familiar things in that movie, so people think it's good, but they don't do anything interesting with the familiar things. In my oh, humble so, opinion. But you can you can fi- if if you're interested, you can you can find lots in that movie. It's uh Paul, you know, uh <laughs> didn't like the prequels and it kind of uh threw him yeah. threw him off. But uh uh, I, yeah, I mean, uh, let's. I don't know where that ranks for me. I'm trying to think. Like, I haven't ranked my Star Wars in a while. I mean, obviously, Star always Star Wars Empire, and yeah, Star Wars Empire Jedi is a pretty easy one, two, three. Uh, but then, uh, then I probably go Solo. I've really liked. I've been watching Solo all the time. Uh, yeah, probably Solo Rogue One. I mean, the prequels are going to be my bottom three. Phantom Menace is my least favorite Star Wars movie. Um, uh, yeah, it's probably my third to the last favorite star wars movie is probably where revenge goes Billy, so i think this, cool. this 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 current trilogy i don't know if any of the prequels i mean they go in distinct blocks one two three one two three i have a you feeling know. this is a uh, suspicious question are you leading us somewhere with that <laughs> you, both your answers were awesome because paul denuzio <laughs> thinks it's the second best star wars movie ever. second oh. best what's your favorite empire is my favorite I have Revenge of the Sith, and then I have Star Wars, and then Jedi. For whatever reason, Revenge of the Sith hit me <laughs> right now, and I love it. It's, I think it's because That's great. It's so over the top. I love it. No, I can't even. <laughs> <laughs> this is me. Guys. This is what he does. This is what he does. This is what he does. You know, we invite company over. We invite, we invite company over. <laughs> <laughs> it's a fair enough reaction. I get it. I, I mean, I, I w- we've I, had people mind flipping a table before. We've never had someone actually do it. I love it. <laughs> commit to the bit. Commit to the bit. If you're gonna commit, you gotta go all the way. It's an old laptop. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So I, 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 Paul, I, I go ahead. Paul, I used Paul. I used to have a bit. You know, when you're talking to someone on the street and you reach the end of the conversation, but you're still talking because you're friends or whatever. <laughs> but somebody, but like you both know. You're done with this conversation. <laughs> You've covered everything you need to. You're about to say goodbye. If you were a, a couple, you would kiss. But you're not. You're friends. You're, you're just about to say goodbye. For a while there, we suddenly turn a bolt. <laughs> just run as fast as you can away without saying goodbye. Just run, 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 run. And you get it. You get it. You'll see it again. Yeah, you get it. Yeah. And it's only funny if you continue running. If you stop and go, ha, 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 you're like, ah, you didn't commit to the bit. So I, mean, I did that to Paul one time, and it was exactly that right moment. And I, like, turned around, and I, I started to slow down, and he goes, commit, commit, and I just started running again. <laughs> he was right. It's not funny if you come back. It's not no, funny if you come back. Hey, isn't there a story about Albert Brooks? Uh, you know, all those comedians who hang out together, Steve Martin, all those guys, Albert Brooks. And Albert Brooks did a bit where he did his big exit. He would do something and leave. And I can't remember what that is. <laughs> but like two hours later, like as like uh, Carl, not Carl Reiner, uh, Rob Reiner or whatever leaves. And there, it, there's Albert Brooks outside. And he's like, yeah, I left my keys in there, but it's not funny if I come back in. Because <laughs> he committed to leaving, you know. <laughs> what are you still doing out here? Yeah, I left my keys in there, but it wouldn't be funny if I came back in. <laughs> <laughs> I love when a comedian will commit to the bit and it stops being funny, but they keep, they just plow through it and then it becomes funny again. Those are like right? some of my favorite. I know. It, it goes yeah. in oh. you, If you hang on long enough, it'll be funny again eventually. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. there is. Yeah, that's a, a certain thing. A, a family guy figured that out with the, the hurting the knee bit. Yeah. It goes on too long. Yeah, and you start fight. laughing because you're like, yeah. that's a little too long. <laughs> and then it keeps going on. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> woo, 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 woo. That like that uncomfortable like length of conversation, like a long drawn out conversation just gives me the TV Like woo, woo. I it's hate that people that long. <laughs> Perfect. Uh so another question. This is more of a Paul question now. So much more down. So now Adam, you can leave for a little bit, I guess. Oh, <laughs> what? Um, 
<laughs> your, debut <laughs> match, your debut match time this year, this year, there was the, of course, the controversial thing with Kate. Um, and Kate took a lot of heat as a manager. Yes, I reserved uh, comment earlier about how it feels now to have a manager. Continue. Right. Well, I don't <laughs> know. What, what was that conversation like when they, you spin festival darlings? Or they spin a bonus choice. Oh, sorry, bonus bonus choice. And I think could, she, she came over and thought, what's the toughest category here? And I concurred. I knew Alonzo <laughs> wrote for the rap. That's all I knew. I didn't know how ingrained they were in festival. This is the kind of thing. We, we would have torched those guys. And yeah. We gave them the thing. Every match, it's it's somebody challenges a thing, or there's a, a category that's that's dumpy, or there's a, you know, mostly it's challenges. A release but, date uh, problem. The wheel goes wrong, or there's, I mean, I, I, I'm trying to wrap my head around that as uh, something. I, I mean, I can't blame Kate entirely, but... Because I was there too, you know, and we both went, okay, why not? I, 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 that is a difficult thing, but I mean, clearly it didn't work. I mean, I mean, that's and she thought, she tried to save it comedy wise in the post, you know, and that's admirable. Well, well that's that's the three levels, right? <laughs> that's the three levels: the gameplay and the characters. So just go with the characters. <laughs> yeah, yeah. When yeah. the gameplay craps the bed, go with the character. <laughs> well, that's the funny thing. That's probably the hardest thing that people don't realize about this mode in a way, because is that half acting half sport thing like in wrestling it's all pre-written so that when you lose the match you know you're gonna lose the match you don't get too heated about losing the match because you know what's going in and your sport you're trying your ass off and it's, it's all completely about sport you can be pissed afterwards i know andrew guy ben, ben bateman said they've had like, losses and then they've had to follow up these losses with these like big character bits and ben, i think it was a team action versus the shire wolves and then Shirewolves beat them in a live event. And every ten later, every ben major loss, out. Ben's had to do a character thing afterwards. Right. Ben. You know, he's like pissed. The all Shirewolves. All uh, spectacular. And then in Chicago. The sh the oh, yeah, absolutely. All of them. And so you have to follow that up with like, so how do you commit to that in a way? But that, so that takes a lot of a lot of gumps. So, so how, how do you guys work on that? Uh, is that anything that come up for you as far as? Well, you're, you're talking about like the throwing them through tables and stuff, right? Is that what you're talking about? Like yeah, those yeah, sort well, of bits? Post post interviews, but like the live event specifically was one for Ben. I know that might be even harder because he didn't have any time in between. Like he had a live match against the against the Shire Wolves, um, and then like five minutes later, he had to come out and be Dan, be a character, and fake, be the fake Dan Merle for Andrew Gata berate when the Five Horsemen got revealed eventually. Yeah. So like I guess in a way, like how does that, does that ever go through your mind? Because you're saying you're saying we're playing a character, but we're also having to focus on movie trivia. It's like too right. close to the brain, right? There's yeah. a real match. There's a real match going on, but then you have to like compartmentalize. Well, I would say the first lesson I learned, and I, I think we both might have, Paul, is that in the first match, you know, we came in as these strong characters, and again, we were just like. If we're not good at the trivia, we better be funny. And we brought 10 bits and we shot stuff outside the studio and you know all the stuff we brought there. But the thing I forgot on the first match or didn't know yet, it, which was a total mistake, was to stay in character while answering the trivia. I don't do that anymore. I turn into Adam Witt when I'm answering those questions because yeah. you need your brain focused on that. And that's why I had some really weird answers that were funny. Because my brain was trying to be funny, and I'm like, right. no, 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 I got to answer the question. So I don't know if that answers your question, but that's it like it does. It does. That was a that was a separation of the character thing. Every uh, every like person coming into the Schmodown should have to watch the uh, it's the Modoc versus the Patriots type title match from season okay. th I think three because that's Matt Achity, it, it's the speed round, and Matt Achity. My parents used to live in Matt Achity. <laughs> <laughs> my parents lived in Dewberry. My parents live in Dewberry. They do. Dewberry, yeah. Mass. Yeah. Sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> and he keeps, he keeps, he's in character trying to to answer in the speed round. You only have two seconds, and the, he's doing character work for <laughs> two the seconds. Right. They were the wow. Uh, missing the questions because of that. Like, and if they, oh, and he knew wow. the answers. And they would have won. <laughs> oh, they that's were tough. From, uh, Rock, Rocky and Bullwinkle. They were doing they yeah. were, him and Greg Draker being the Russians. They were adding this like accent to all their things and oh, yeah, come comrade. And then like he totally just. <laughs> and it was but crazy. after the first time we did it, we learned there's the hype video. So we write that. We we got all our bits for that. And that's that's the first character piece people see. We have a couple things that we know we can go to in the post interview. And we have our entrance. 
So that's like three pieces already. So like after you've done that, it just go answer some trivia. You don't have to make with the bits at the table. And then the more relaxed you get, the kind of funnier you get. I, I feel like I said a couple, without well, I even mean, trying in the Star Wars thing, like just a couple of responses. I, I was like, I feel like I was funnier in that match because I wasn't trying to be funny. I was being relaxed, but also I was in Star Wars. So I'm like, I'm very comfortable in that world. You know, right. Okay. Yeah, I'll be, uh, I'll, I'll bring the, the, the party down a little bit. And, you know, I think anyone watching knows that my wife got sick last year and, and passed away in December. And I had my final match of the year against Bateman in the singles tournament. And that's when this whole question came up about the release date of Seven Samurai. Right. And I was, uh, this will answer a couple of questions for you about the manager thing too. So I was sitting there watching that go down where this whole horde of horsemen came over and like were, had their phones and were, you know, pointing and complaining about the date got wrong and Bateman was wrong and the challenge and all this stuff. And, uh, you know, of course, I had nobody on my side talking about it uh you know and you, so you should have but i didn't know my place yeah <laughs> i mean I, yeah. I thought i wasn't allowed to jump up and go hey this is <laughs> whatever right but. so i mean f so t to answer that manager question uh it's good to have a manager there because that kind of thing that they had i wish i had now this i say all that to say at the time this was when karen was quite ill so i was not in a headspace to fight you know, that match just kind of lost and I watched it go away. I didn't, I, we could have argued about the last, the five pointer. Adam told me afterwards, like they got the date all wrong in that five pointer. You could have challenged that. And, but I, you know, was not in it. So, and then afterwards I was not ready to, to be in character to answer the current question. Right. And Jen Sturger came up and said, no okay, Fabe here. I just want to talk about Karen. I'm like, that sounds good because <laughs> I don't want to talk yeah. about this match, you know, and uh, and then that was a great thing. And of course, you know, what I mentioned in the match uh, post interview was that Bateman was the one of the most recent names I saw as someone who contributed to the uh, Facebook fundraiser for her. You know, and there I am playing. So, you know, it's it's all we're all in the same tribe, despite uh, you know whatever goes on. Yeah. Well, and and also, I mean, the the Schmodown, I everything in life is on time and in its perfect place. That Paul could have this group of of people who are obviously are like extremely like minded. <laughs> Look at all the stuff we're laughing at tonight, and I, I you could bring twenty people in and we go, what are you guys even talking about? <laughs> but you know, so but for they made Paul a to sequel this... to Speed. You know, yeah, exactly. Right? <laughs> you named all three of Dennis Miller's movies. <laughs> three different ones of us named one a piece. That's so <laughs> ridiculous. <laughs> Is there ever going to be a Dennis Miller slice on the wheel, maybe? Oh, oh yes. Sure. Yes. In the movie, guys. <laughs> we, got to, we, got a wheel. we got a whole wheel joke we want to do. Oh, yeah. Dennis Miller movies. That's, that's, that's it. Dennis Miller yeah. movies. That's great. Right. We're going to get oh this God. sucker over quicker than a Dennis Miller film fest. <laughs> <laughs> Some of the wheel slices are categories from the free-for-all 3.5. No, let's just get into that. Yeah, we've been throwing that. Why don't we get into that now? The free-for-all 3.5 debuted today. And <laughs> did you even get how excited and popular this was going to be? Did you have any concept how like excited everyone was going to be when it started going down? Well, I don't, I don't uh, know. Wait, yeah. I'll, let me start because I want to say yeah. Saturday was legitimately my birthday. And so I was going to go to the free-for-all, and that was going to be my birthday. I'm like, how mm. great would that be, right? And I was going to invite friends to watch it, and then we all got to dinner afterwards. You know, and we had a whole oh, thing planned. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> stop it, Rachel. <laughs> um, <laughs> we'll explain. We'll explain. Uh, we'll, we'll explain, yeah. <laughs> but um, Give us one second. <laughs> so, you know... Uh, I'll be damned if any coronavirus <laughs> is going to come in here and uh, and take our free for all away. So we we had to spring into action. We heard a call to action. One day. <laughs> yeah. I see what you did there. Yeah, are you are you walking here, Paul? I'm walking here. I'm walking here. <laughs> well, Christopher, um... best oh, improv sorry. line ever. <laughs> so uh, yeah, so that was uh, I. That, uh, Adam, we text each other all the time. Half the jokes in that show were texts we've sent each other in the past that we just managed to print out or save. And now, sure enough, they've come back into a wacky sketch. 
But Adam was saying, yeah, we should just do the whole thing with Star Wars figures. And I went, wait a minute. <laughs> we can't just let that go. Yeah. <laughs> That's going to be a crap ton of work, but we should think about it. And sure enough, <laughs> it was a crap ton of work. But uh, yeah, it was great. <laughs> well, uh, well we yeah, I mean, but that's that's also the, uh, you know, uh, yeah. When we when we text each other, the idea of like, you know, it's a lot of monologues and stuff. The Master Bateman monologue, which I'm very proud of. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, that came out of texts. Uh, but we have been texting each other a lot of trivia questions, but we can't help but be smart asses and start sending the questions like you heard tonight, <laughs> in the midst of trying to train each other for other things. So we just started pulling aside these dumb. You know, Harry Hamlin questions and stuff that we would throw each other, you know, <laughs> name a Bonnie Bedelia or whatever. And like, and so we're just like, all right, we're going to make those our own thing. And this just happened to be the opportunity to do it. Right. How much uh, O'Keefe? Miles O'Keefe. Yeah. That's how much O'Keefe is in Tarzan the movie? Yeah. <laughs> Miles O'Keefe. Um, but, but yeah, this is one of those ideas that was just like, oh, Paul and I've been working together for so long that I, we both realized exactly how much work this would be. But the key was, because obviously we were robbed of something this weekend, like as a community, there feels like a vacuum here, you know, right. like that we were all, Paul was going to be on stage for his birthday, winning this thing. You know, I mean, Damn Paul was going to win. I don't know if you know, but Paul was going to win this thing Damn because straight. Paul's been through a lot. And Paul's well-trained and I think Paul was going to go in with some fire and was going to win that thing. So anyway, he was not only robbed of that, but he was robbed of being able to challenge the, the, you know, Dan Merle. But anyway, other than that, <laughs> <laughs> no, but, but we thought, um, we thought let's do the full thing because it wouldn't feel just doing a sketch or something. We didn't even discuss this like to like, Oh, it's just a sketch. No, no, no. Like it had to be the length of one. It had to be a real one. It had to feel like watching it so that we could get it back and take back the power from whatever this is. And the longer it was, the more real it was. We started, we were going to do 40 contestants. We ended up doing 31 when we did the math and we we're like, come on, we got to be, we got to ease up a little bit. Right. Um, but, but still, we didn't want to do 10. It didn't want to do 20. It wouldn't feel real. And so then I was just like, it's like that Jerry Lewis telethon thing. It's like, Jerry's been up for 72 hours, man. Look at that guy. It's like, I'm contributing. And so, and so I just felt like that energy of like, no, it's going to be hard. But if we make it real, if we make everyone be able to sit there for 83 minutes uh, to watch that thing, you know, then obviously it might end up getting shot really crappy also. But, but, now, uh, that but wait, uh, <laughs> now that it's done, I just want to say, you'll never walk alone. It was All right. Speaking of Rachel. I don't, I don't want to say, I don't want to say who won, who but won. I will say Rachel's Water. chiming in because there is a uh, MVP uh, debate. About it is, yeah. Well, what, what, I don't know. I don't know if we want to spoil for other people. But we do have to talk about this for Rachel, who is watching and listening. That we did a, we have a spreadsheet. We did forty contestants. We did coin flips for each question, yes or no. Heads, they got the question right, and then we would just make up some ridiculous question for that to be. Um, in the original coin flips, when we were doing forty, Rachel was out much earlier. Paul took those coin flips, uh, and then and then. Uh, put them uh, I, I can't remember we we figured out some way of using the same coins to decide with less people who would who would win and in the yeah, original the coin version were the same we just moved the people in over yeah. the same wins and losses gotcha. okay. chance i don't think got knocked out by rachel in the original version something like that but uh, it it did it did occur to me while editing this that rachel's the obvious mvp but we had i i but I, for some reason, thought that there was, like, one more match that Chance had won than her, like, statistically. But that's not how you do MVP anyway. And, and I'm going to spoil... You know. Should I spoil something that happened in the match tonight? Or what? Is people really... Is this a spoiler, like a showdown? Spoilers. Just in case. You can well, spoil it. All right. 50, 60 people have watched it. So you well, can I, won't, I, won't, I won't say when it happened or, or, or whatever, whatever, but Rachel knocked out the other person you would consider the MVP and Rachel cleared the board and Rachel uh, could have won. <laughs> I, I don't want to say how, how close to, to the end or the circumstances, uh, but I, it is obvious and it was obvious editing it that Rachel was the MVP. But for some reason I thought we had that calculation and we had said that in the shoot 
that that chance was, and that was based on the old map. Anyway, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now she's now she's giving me crap. In the thing. All right. you know I tried, I tried to explain. It wouldn't be a schmo without a little bit of controversy. So yeah, right. Right. Exactly. that's the point. Isn't that the point? Everyone acts like we're supposed to. Yeah, yeah. Love all Star Wars movies. Now the point is to discuss. Just don't ask me to do any character stuff now that now that everything's all emotional. <laughs> <laughs> she demands a mini trophy. Oh, not the throne. Mini trophy. I think ah. <laughs> You're gonna get a trophy. <laughs> Definitely deserves one. Let me let me think what a good trophy would be. Well, we should make a trophy for for this thing. I think people want us to do it again next year. I think that's definitely people do want to see it again. Yeah. They've already said that in the chat. They were saying that this is going to have to be an annual thing now. Yeah. Could be our could be our new puppy bowl. But <laughs> 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 I love the puppy bowl. I watch the puppy bowl every year. <laughs> <laughs> they say blame future Ellis and future Harlov. Yeah. yeah. Right. Don't blame us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Rachel, right? Rachel, direct your anger at uh, yeah, alternate the uh, alternate timeline Mark Ellis <laughs> and old Christian from the future. Yeah. yeah. The old Star Wars bell could be your title if people <laughs> have it around. We'll see yeah. it the line of uh, why are you why are you cheering for the dungeon? You're Mark Ellis. That was, <laughs> <laughs> that was a screw up. He left it in and it got a laugh. That's fine. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> so good. Sometimes those are the perfect ones to have. Though. Well, Paul, Paul, what was the line I said at the at the end that was a legitimate flub up? But I was like, there's how pointless this was, or uh, what was the line? Oh yeah, it all. <laughs> it all uh, yeah, what the hell was it? Oh, uh, you just texted it to me. It's just so funny. Uh, hold on one second. Second. <laughs> uh, yeah, hold the show. Oh, well, here it well, is. Well. It's all for nothing. It, it's all or it's nothing. Right. No, it's all for. Yeah, so I'm trying to say it's all for nothing. It's all for nothing. And I'm just like, what are we doing this Let's for? Be honest. Why are we? Yeah, why are we setting up action figures and pretending to be hosts? And we're recording so much content. This is all yeah. for nothing. It's all for nothing. <laughs> <laughs> But but I think that spirit that created that sort of thing of like, no, we have to do a telethon. We have to put in too much time. We have to give the legit experience of sitting and watching the competition. And then the competition is legitimately engrossing. Yeah. Like, as you're watching it, you're like, oh, my God, she's been in this a while. Wow, yeah, she can really, chat you're talking like, about a Princess Lee action figure. <laughs> the chat was like, oh, my God, I can't believe that so-and-so is dead. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, blah, blah, blah. Right. So, people are chanting, go, go. Kaiser gets on there, starts coaching virtual yeah, video Drew. Yeah, he's coaching <laughs> virtual <laughs> video Drew. It's, it's great. It's great. <laughs> That yeah, it exceeded expectations. So, that's the type of wholesome yeah, that we absolutely need. It's a wholesome entertainment that we all need at the right time. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, wow, what was that? <laughs> Danny, you're not going to have one? Boss. That was all me, yeah. <laughs> Perfect Drunk. storm. Other than that. <laughs> <laughs> I think from now on, I'm going to put a stack of cans next to any video chat and just somewhere in the middle of it, just knock over way too many cans. You're like, <laughs> like what you see outside of here, you just have to imagine like, what's going on over there? Sorry, continue. Yeah. <laughs> I continue. Um, so anyway, I was talking about our uh, our client. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Oh, is it time for this or that, Danny? Should we get into this or that? It again? is. It All is right. absolutely time. Do we answer all your questions? <laughs> if you ever seen the show or not, this is time for this or that, where I'll give Paul and Adam two uh, choices, Sophie's choices possibly, and they'll have to decide which one is better, which one is worse. They can actually make up whatever they want to make up. It's all up to them, really. Well, if we um, want to work on this together, Adam, we can just come down here and talk about yeah. it to each other. We can whisper uh, so, down here. Uh, if it's Sophie's choice, I'm going to choose Peter, Peter McNichol. I'm, gonna <laughs> choose, well, I'm choosing Kevin Klein. You lose like immediately. Wow. Anyway. I'm, going, I'm right. going Peter McNichol. I'm a big fan of Dragon Slayer. <laughs> Why are my drippings fit oh, he's the one. <laughs> <laughs> Everything you're doing is wrong. It's, it's bad. I want you yeah. to know this. <laughs> All right, the first question we ask, we have some questions that are every week and some questions that are tailor-made. Uh, the first question we always ask on our Shield Action-based podcast is whether you guys are Team Andrew Guy or are you Team Trader? Oh, you have to explain what the Team Trader. I yeah. think I've answered this before. Ben team... Bateman is a dirty traitor to the yeah, Action that's... Army. <laughs> And oh, 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 you're calling Ben Bateman the traitor. Yes, Ben Bateman yeah. the traitor. Gotcha. gotcha. Oh, yeah, yeah, I know what you're saying. Yeah, I know what you're saying. Traitor. Okay. I am team uh I am 
team guy because of that, that loss to Bateman in the uh, singles match. I got to, I got to, you know, I can't, I can't yeah. get on board with the Bateman train. Yeah, there we, we go. We took it all the way to the damn uh, championship too. <laughs> that's true. That's true. Yeah, and that, that's why Paul calls him the asterisk. Yeah. He won that on an asterisk. Also, yeah. an asterisk right. looks like a butthole. <laughs> that's that's corgi. The asterisk. Okay. The asterisk. <laughs> Adam, are you team guy or team trader? Are you? Uh, I, I'd be team guy. Perfect. Yeah, that 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 match of Paul's just doesn't sit well in my head. I think that was more his team is uh, his support group there. But uh, yeah, that, that that didn't sit well because yes, yes, I mean that sent him all the way, and that that was Paul's. That was that was Paul's. Okay, fair enough. Absolutely. All right. Well, I guess Can you imagine if that match goes differently and the Shazam match goes differently, how last year's tournaments would have looked. Man, mind blower, right? Double what about the movie guy songs or Renaissance? Or oh my god! Guy. Just the, the the fates tipped this way or that way. Yeah, this or that way. Yeah. <laughs> cool, cool. Did they change the rules this season based on that Kurosawa thing too? I feel like I heard some sort of thing about specifically. Well, now we have managers and stuff who could do a challenge, so you just right. can't have, you know, Dan Merle and everybody running up with phones saying. Uh, Paul Preston should lose. Look, right? Look at right here. Paul Preston should lose. Right. That's all I heard on the phone. It was actually, <laughs> they actually pulled up a notepad. Yeah. And, just said, Paul Preston, <laughs> and Chris was like, uh, all right, sure. <laughs> you make a good so, point. I will go that instead of this. <laughs> That's, that, 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 okay, perfect. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's see. Indiana Jones or Han Solo? Oh, devil's question. Mm -hmm. Devil's question. You want to throw one of those, one of those in down the chasm? So one of them has to fall into the pit. Uh, uh, I, 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 there we go. Worth getting. Yeah. Worth getting. Paul. Have you on T Public yet? <laughs> Check out Ben Bateman's new uh, shirt on T Public. Can I throw Harrison Ford's character uh, for, uh, from, uh, you know, but over instead. It's going to be Han Solo or Indiana Jones. We'll take Indiana Jones and Harrison Ford. Yeah. yeah uh, I go Indiana Jones. I can make yeah. that. Yeah, I got it. Through. Because uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark is my favorite movie of all time. What is that? Um, of course, when you ask somebody what their favorite movie of all time is, it's assumed besides Star Wars. So <laughs> Han Solo <laughs> would be me. first, but Indiana Jones in Raiders hit me harder, and uh, it's just the greatest hero of all time. Oh, that character. Yeah. That char I, I use the term a lot, carved from movie stone. There's just some looks, like that Indiana Jones look, just carved from movie stone. It's just, that is a movie star character. That is Humphrey Bogart. That is, you know, name your name your James Dean, whatever. Like, oof, that was, they, they carved that one out of movie stone. Han Solo a little bit, but it's more that that movie is carved out of movie stone than Han Solo specifically. I get that. I get that. Yeah. And look at the chat. There it is. He loves you guys. Hey, the hey you guys. Ben. <laughs> Give your ass, everyone. No hard feelings. No hard feelings. <laughs> Ben's, a, Ben's a very nice guy. <laughs> oh, here's, he's, I'm going to kill Here's this is going to kill you now, Paulo, too. Here's yeah, why does a traitor tune into this show? Anyway, Wait, where is it? I just had it in there. Um, no, here we go. I just gonna. This might kill you even more. I just had it. Just dropped it. Where'd it go? Where'd it go? I lost you want it. me to get it, Paul? I got That's it. That's all right. I left it? the whole yeah. show. There for you a go. Second, you know, but oh. kind of dated. It's a period piece. <laughs> yeah, get off. Right. It looks get better. off. I'll take this up with you later. <laughs> yeah, that's why it looks better than every other movie made in nineteen. It is hotter. It definitely does. Because it takes place in nineteen thirty-six. <laughs> kind of dated. Good call. Good call, Ben. Yeah, you're right. I can't believe I, I can't believe I'm hearing takes. Not great. I can't believe I'm hearing takes like that from the belt holder. Oh wait, he's not anymore. Oh, oh, right. Right. oh, oh man. 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 very fine, very fine. Okay. <laughs> what else we got? Oh, you. Yeah. <laughs> we named the dog Ben Bateman. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna name my dog Ben Bateman. <laughs> oh yeah, to the boss. Ah. I'm just saying because it's a cute name for a dog. It's not a put down. Don't write any text on the screen. Oh screen, no, ben. Ben's great cool. guy. Yeah, Ben. No, ben. Yeah. My father was Ben. <laughs> uh, uh, See, he, he's missed Indiana Jones questions in the past. He did miss what is Indy's middle name. 
He did. He was all of them. Uh, better James Bond, Timothy Dalton or Pierce Brosnan? I might not know that one. I got that answer too. You do? Timothy Dalton. Yes. All right. And it was a lot of timing. Timothy Dalton brought back things Connery had that were needed after the Moore franchise got too cartoonish. Panic, blood, struggle. Um, Brosnan had all that too, but unfortunately I think he was around too long to where his movies got cartoonish. Dalton going to and out, they were both just full of uh, balls and sweat and uh you know and it was it, they were half ugly license to kill was like super ugly um and i think of all the bonds he might be the best actor so connery's a great movie star but i think Dalton might be the best actor you know look at his pedigree too shakespeare's royal shakespeare stage and all this stuff you know he's a uh, uh, so man big fan i wish he made more you know how it is Braza is too much hurt acting now I've heard this hurt acting thing too. I, Matt Gorley comments on that too on the James Bonding podcast, which I'm uh, obsessed with. Uh, but uh, so, what was the question? Who am I comparing, Dalton or Brosnan? Dalton or Brosnan. Okay. Um, <clears throat> who now? And the specific question is, who's my favorite, or who's the better James Bond? Right. It's the answer either way. You can oh, do both okay. if you want. You pick. Okay. Well, my my favorite is Pierce Brosnan between the two of those. Now, uh, what I love about them and all the Bonds is you don't get much more 60s than Sean Connery and you don't get more 70s than Roger Moore and you and thank goodness there was a good 80s James Bond and Timothy Dalton. He is the 80s James Bond. I think they hired every extra cinematographer and production designer from a Lethal Weapon to do <laughs> License to Kill. I mean like all the extras are like that guy's with Riggs and Lethal Weapon. It's like all silver pictures guys. But um um, so I do love that he's like this 80s James Bond. He's the post-Rambo James Bond. Like, we needed one of those. But we also needed our 90s James Bond. And man, this Pierce Brosnan. I mean, all 90s movies are adorable in how 90s they are. I mean, not a lot transcends. Not a lot made it out of that vacuum. People like to hack on the, the prequel trilogy, but I'm like, hey, I'll take my 90s Star Wars movies. That's what 90s Star Wars movies look like, you know? <laughs> but, um Movies. Yeah, but, but, but Brosnan is my favorite. I, I love that they went for uh, a Roger Moore vibe again, and 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 they had to they had to do Roger. You you can't you know doing Roger Moore. Hey, Doctor Marvin, Doctor Leo Marvin. Points to Franco. Points to Franco for his corgi in that picture. Um, oh so my god! Let, let me share mine here. Yeah, that's um, awesome. <laughs> I'd like to point out. <laughs> doggies. Oh, we love do- doggies. Always equal ratings on the show. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I have a hot take that uh, that Sean Bean was the Bond that never was because I feel like Sean Bean could have been a really great James Bond. Uh, God, isn't he born to play a villain, though? Yeah. yeah. Is Sean Bean never the hero? Face. He is that villain face, and he was oh, oh, James oh Bond. yeah, Rocketeer. He's a great villain. I, yep. yeah. Attorney Mustache villain, right? Like Tim yeah. Rocketeer. Yeah. I mean, it's just yeah. like yeah. And, and you know, some people. I'll bring this back to like General Hux in uh, in Force Awakens, uh, and in all of those, he gets more and more. But I just like just go for it. Wait, are you really going to bring some subtlety to the Death Star guy or the whatever that's going to blow up the planet? Like, just go. And they did. They did like all of his stuff is so spat. These lines that are spat. And I'm like, go for it. I love it. Yeah, go for Chewing it. Off I, I love Timothy Dalton in that regard. And uh, what? Uh, hot Fuzz. Yeah. Great. Hot. That's what I think. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's yeah. Uh, great in that. Great. Oh, yeah. Flash Gordon, uh-huh. did anyone mention that yet? So anyway. Oh, that's right. Uh, well, that's right. Yeah. great, yeah. yeah. It's a sore subject on this podcast because we played the Mike Kalinowski singing the wrong answer get, uh, Flash video for like... Ah, yeah. Mr. Sam Jones! And like that, he's gone. <laughs> <laughs> what, a, what a rookie mistake for Kalinowski, huh? Yeah. Like, like, like... Like, I make rookie mistakes every time I've done it because I've only done three matches. But when I was watching that, I was like, oh, he just pulled a me. I mean, like, he should know. Like, you, uh, like, got too excited. Like I did with Infus Nest. I got so excited. I was like, I, I know the name of the cloud writers. Ooh, that's such a hard part to know. But you're like, no, one point 
question or you know two point questions. It's not going right. to be the crowd writers is going to be Memphis Nest, you know. Right. <laughs> Did bring that but I get, you get excited. I, I I feel his excitement there, and I love that. Like, and you get so excited to know the answer, and you're like, ah, please be the answer I know, and you realize like mentally you've thought of not the answer they're looking for. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I'm like to watch Kalinowski pull pull one like that, and I'm like, that's for me to do. I'm new at this. <laughs> Rookie one of the best moments in the history of this show is we had Mike and Shannon on, and Paul asked Mike a this or that of of uh, Peter Parker or Flash Gordon, and Mike said, "Oh, I'm a Flash Gordon guy." Oh, and then I Paul really? that <laughs> to Mike. Oh, <laughs> how did he take it? He took it pretty oh, well. Yeah. Shannon was next to him, making sure he was comforted and everything. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that well. It was that all meant to be good for him. I mean, you got to take your lumps. You know, if you mess up, don't tell Peter. You know, if you're going to do that, you're going to get it back. You know, so you got to lean into it and own it. That's what he always says. I mean, Paul's wearing an asterisk shirt. He just <laughs> called Ben Bateman a butthole right here, and Ben Bateman's watching. <laughs> <laughs> so we all have to take our lumps. <laughs> hey, I got to lift down, you know, uh, hashtag. Uh, Festival Darlings. So, Festival you know, Darlings. Yeah. Yeah. All right. All right. Uh, this, this history of the show is flubbed. There's all the way from Bespin with uh, Roca when right. he hosted. That's a, a famous one. I have to watch that match again because I, I know they mentioned that, and I think I've seen it. But yeah, I have to watch that again. Yeah. Is that a big yeah. match? Was that what was on the line for that match? That's um, what I don't so remember. It was, it was just a. Uh, it was a right. The first ever rivalry match in Schmodown history it was Mance versus Roca because they were rivalry. They were rivals from movie fights, and right. they brought that into the Schmodown. And if Roca hits that, he wins. Right. Oh, okay. Well, and he, and he pulled and he pulled an emphasis nest. He said the harder thing, right. the easier thing to say is what was the answer they're looking for? Cloud City, right? No, no, no they were no one to watch. They were looking for three, the it was the three planet, planet setting, the three planet settings that Empire Strikes Back. Oh. And he couldn't pull for some reason he couldn't pull Bespin and he said Tatooine. And like Oh, a, oh, like, oh, okay. Like, I mean, oh, yeah. New, new, new cool Bespin. Yeah, he couldn't pull uh, Bespin out of it. So, oh, he hated that. He he still is pissed about that. The brain is tough. The brain is tough. Sometimes it doesn't do what you want it to do. Well, when you're as old as John Roca, too, I mean, you turn. Oh my god. <laughs> hey, he's so old. He's so. Old. I'm that guy's so old. So I, have, oh. I have to throw that out of him every once in a while. We, 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 it's 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 cool. It's fine. <laughs> All right. I can't on. make fun of I can't make fun of anybody's age who has hair color. <laughs> <laughs> if this grew out, I'd be right there with you, probably. So. <laughs> um, okay, here's a good one, actually. Though, because I know Paul, you grew up in. Arizona. Oh, good, because those other ones were not that great. <laughs> yeah, can we get a good question? We got yeah, a video you... for like an hour and six minutes. Over. You know what? Fan them to the camera. We'll pick one. <laughs> there you go. I'll tell something in text. No, 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 no. Oh, yeah, yeah. All right. <laughs> Hey, I'll answer I'm six that. Two. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, the Reds. The Reds. <laughs> the Reds. Okay. You can keep going. I, I like it. Well. Sure. Uh, um, I like, uh, they call it cold cheese pizza. You put the pizza in the oven, <laughs> then you take it out, and then you sprinkle more mozzarella on top after it's out of the oven. And that's the that was uh, the pizza that was designed in my hometown. Uh, no, I'm not that into jam bands. Okay, fair enough. Fair enough. Nope, 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 nope. Oh, oh, this is a good one. Yeah. Um, years ago, I played uh, Charles Dickens in a Charles Dickens village. And it's a good question. And at the, we ended it every day with the reading of the uh, a Christmas Carol. And then all the characters who played the other characters from Dickens Village would come and reenact the story. But I had this giant book, right? And I was reading it. And a kid in the front row just ran up. I saw him disappear under the book. I was like, where the hell is he going? And he hit me in the nuts. And I'm like, oh, what? Like, this was an uncontrollable kid. That, well, how do you, I'm just like, he just hit me in the Yule log. I had to up. That's the only line I had. And, uh, yeah, it, it's I, he had to reach up. To, I don't know why. He was sitting there going, I got to hit that guy in the balls. I'll be right back, Mom. You know, like, but that's uh, – Merry that's Christmas. Happened, so that's a great question. <laughs> Merry yeah. Christmas, everyone. <laughs> well, in that case, how about this one? I'll choose this one. Better 3 a.m. food, garbage plate or buffalo wings? No, nope, next one. <laughs> no, next one. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, garbage plate. Okay. Oh, oh time night. Wait, Wings is earlier. Wings isn't a late night thing. Garbage plate's a late night thing. I no, won't no. be, uh, I won't pretend. What? Explain me garbage plate. Really? Upstate New York, Rochester? You don't have never heard of garbage plate? 
Moniante. Might have another name for it, right? Garbage plates kind of. It's what, like fries and gravy and it's pretty much everything. Like you egg and an egg, egg and, and you know, all piled all on it. It's basically garbage, but oh, everything you can throw on in. there. Ah, uh, wings. That's a salad wings. with with. Uh... Okay. Okay. But... What's your preference? We're not finding out anything about you. Yeah. Mm. What about you? Me? What are you? Gar garbage, garbage plate. plate? Definitely a garbage uh, plate. Hey. It was a good drunken food. It soaked up all the alcohol. I can go back out for more. Mm -hmm. Although at 3 a.m. I can't do that anymore, though. Couldn't do it anymore. Because <laughs> I'm broke age myself at this point. So, uh, <laughs> all right. Let's see. Any more better ghost? Congratulations. You finally know who you are and, and can take care of yourself. <laughs> I mean, uh, everyone everyone bags on aging. I'm like, yeah, look, I, I don't need to be 20 or 30 again. I, I tried it. I wasn't so good at it. No. <laughs> no. It, I was trying like hell to have the Mel Gibson do from Lethal Weapon. Oh. Uh, I'll say this: worked on Mel Gibson. <laughs> <laughs> Warren Beatty's haircut for Parallax View. <laughs> uh, yeah, I did that whole shoulder length hair thing. That that's a long time ago. No, oh, I wish I'd committed at one point and had it and gotten rid of it and regret it. But <laughs> now I can't do any of that. <laughs> the funny thing is, I've seen people who try it and like my they've tried it again. They try to read like after their mid middle age crisis or whatever midlife crisis, and they try it. And it's like. Ooh, <laughs> but yeah. yeah, gentlemen. Right about now, I'm supposed to get an earring, right? Is that? Yeah, that's an earring, and then if you had the money, you'd get some kind of really uh, great sports car. Sure, you're supposed to get an earring when you uh, break up with your high school girlfriend. Or yeah. Maybe that's just me. <laughs> <laughs> I got I got one when I played El Gallo in the Fantastics in college, but okay. I live in an alternate timeline. <laughs> Fair enough. Okay. Uh, better Ghostbuster, Egon or Ray? Because Venkman's oh. the best. I, couldn't, I, I can't put Venkman there. Venkman's the easy one. <laughs> Egon. Egon. Uh, I just it's something I don't connect with about Ray. Ray is... Yes. What what kind of comic persona is Ray in Ghostbusters? I don't think I've ever quite analyzed him. Uh, enthusiasm. Like, you know, you know, the top yeah. Nerd. Yeah, it's the only top nerd. That's right, because Egon nerd. intelligent. But yeah, I guess... Yeah, you know, he sits with Egon though and has that scene where Tobin's spirit guide and the whole so he knows as much as Egon. Right. So, yeah, they do. Right. So you can't pick Egon for being the brain that he's the better Ghostbuster. So it's like do you like the reserved guy who's an odd quirky dude, or do you like the enthusiastic guy? Hey, he mortgaged his house. I'm going Ray. It was mom's house, but yeah, I'm going Ray. Okay. Well, yeah, you got you gotta love Ray because I think we all come from the same point of view that Ray does when he slides in that pole and goes, This place is great. Like that's <laughs> I think that's my life, you know. <laughs> You gotta try this. Uh, isn't this great? <laughs> I mean, and it sounds ridiculous to other people. Well, to you guys, but I'm just like, what am I gonna go tell a friend? I'm like, and then we set up the Star Wars action figures, and hey, never mind, never mind. <laughs> yeah, it's like that enthusiasm. It's like that's all there is, you know. <laughs> Fair enough. Okay. Uh, better '80s villain: Johnny Lawrence or Chet from Weird Science? Johnny Lawrence. Uh, yeah. Now, granted, if Chet had a Cobra Kai esque television show right now where we could see what's still going on with him, <laughs> that'd be fantastic. Of course, we lose Bill Paxton, so it's not going to happen. But right. Cobra Kai, Cobra Kai is everything, it and is. Uh, it yeah, it t goes right back and validates everything Johnny was about in the Karate Kid. So yeah, that's my pick. I agree with that. Yeah, it shouldn't, it shouldn't be that good. You know, it shouldn't be that good. Kai, like you sound Cobra Kai, like what are they doing? But then you yeah. watch it and you're like, because we're we're so good now in pop culture at 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 doing this stuff. I mean, there was a time where we were very bad at it. it like movies would come out and they'd try and be something that you'd want to see. Like if you tried to do it, well, they did. They did all these karate kids in the nineties that nobody watches, you know, and they just forgot how to do that stuff. But like the the you know, redoing Star Wars, redoing Karate Kid, they're all straight down the pike like it's really we know our pop culture so well and love it so much that people are just acing it i mean I, the, people have complaints about these new star wars movies uh, they are acing how that they, they are correct in how they love star wars from my estimation all of and, them. I, and i say that that it, the choice that won was continuation of saga as opposed to remake you know we <laughs> talked about we goofed on poltergeist in our show and you could go on about total recall and fright night and when you think of those movies you think of uh, you know, they're here and the little blonde girl and Spielberg, and you think of Schwarzenegger and you think of uh, Chris Sarandon, right? And you, you don't think of the remakes because they're cash grabs. What right. the better, but the better franchises did, like Creed and Jurassic World, was expand on what they already had, and right. so yeah, uh, yeah. Cobra Kai yeah. does that 
fantastically. So exactly, it's a difference between a soft reboot and a hard reboot. The soft reboot is just the continuation of it. You take everything that was good and you make sure it stays because you have a foundation already built upon. So you can go with that foundation instead of trying to read like don't make the ground floor again. Build up more. A perfect example. It's two movies that came out around the same time. You had Total Recall with a remake that was terrible. And then you had Dread, which was like this remake that nobody wanted. That was like, what is, why are you doing this? And that movie, I thought that movie was great. And mm -hmm. it, because they didn't try to. It's not really a remake. To, it's not. It's not. It's a reimagining, basically, or a, a reboot, I guess you could say. Like, Yeah, I mean, but it's from a comic. Like, it's from a comic book. But I don't know if that story right, is from one of the true, comic yeah. books. But yeah. But it's definitely much more in the heart of. It's interesting. The, the more they go in the direction that studios would never have done 80s or 90s of these adaptations, like the adaptations of superhero movies in the 80s or 90s, again, the whole black leather thing, whatever, but it's like, or the Kevin Smith's whole thing of like, uh, no, no, we're not going to have Superman fly. We're not going to wear the red uniform. That is so 90s in development. And I, I love that it, it took a while for people to catch up, but there used to be this thing when they would release this. Uh, you know, you're like, oh, they're making an X. And I wonder what the costumes are like. And they released that first picture and it's all black leather. And then you and then they released the first picture of Spider-Man and it was actually whoa, radical. You mean making it look like the actual comic book? And then Marvel, <laughs> Marvel from the very beginning, you're like, I wonder what their Iron Man's gonna look like. Oh, exactly like the comic book. Oh, I wonder what their Captain America's gonna look like. Oh, exactly like the comic book. And, and there's just every single one of them, you know, like that that's a, that's a thing in the past of like, I wonder what the costume will look like. I'm like, that's just like the comic book. Nice. Yeah, that Raimi's uh, Spider-Man was especially because they're coming off of really dark X-Men and everything. Suddenly you have red Spider-Man and, and green Goblin against a blue sky and all those yeah. colorful balloons. It's like, whoa, they just doubled down on color for this one just to be different. It paid off. Yeah. Okay. Totally paid off. Yeah. We could go on more tangents. We always go on tangents. That's our that's the show. We always go on tangents. No, yeah, absolutely. I have a question for Adam. So that's Birds of Prey. And that's yeah. Birds of Prey. <laughs> Adam, are you doing the whole uh, not going to shave until – because I haven't seen you in a while. Now you got a beard. Are you going to go full old man in the sea, or what are you doing? Well, I, I, I've never been fully set on whether a gray beard is a good idea. Like, should I accent my gray hair? I, I don't know. Is it is it a, is the sort of thing I should accent? But you are. I, I grow a good beard, but I grow a good beard, and I don't know. People people tell me they like it, and I was kind of going to grow it for a zipper, and uh, for our our characters uh, characters were working on, and I had I had a whole different look that I was starting to work on. Beard is part of it, <laughs> and now everybody's growing a beard for coronavirus. Is that where you're saying that? Yeah, yeah. or just I'm indoors. Screw it. I'm not shaving. I'm not barely showering. Yeah. I don't have any <laughs> pants on right now. A, you know, all that. A, a Conan <laughs> O'Brien. Beard, right? Uh, Letterman yeah. beard. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, Letterman beard. That's oh, that's a great. Mine coincided. Beard. Yeah, that's a terrible beard. <laughs> beard, beard. Beards are terrible. This is okay. This is like a Kenneth Branagh beard. Kenneth Branagh beards are fine. Uh, dignified, a little dignified. I get that. Thor I beards, right? Just like that, uh, something like that. Just I'm not kind of beards. Me personally, I like a beard. Yeah. Yeah. I like beard. Just not like the. Yeah, let's get the girls' perspective. Why even listening? Yeah, to yeah exactly. I'll cover right. you up. Can I cover you guys up? <laughs> <laughs> get the post-it notes out. Hey, there we go. <laughs> I got a compliment on the beard over here in the chat too. Oh, Santa, Cla Santa Claus beard. See, this is the. But I don't know if Santa oh. Claus beard is the. Uh, I should be going for. It. I don't there you know. go. Chat enough. My beard. Santa Claus has a nice. Stall's beard. beard fell off supposedly. Oh, so. Uh oh. Ooh. Ooh. You should probably consult the amount of radiation in your groundwater. <laughs> <laughs> oh, unless it was fake. Were you saying it was fake? Ooh, I went dark there. <laughs> <laughs> now there's another curl perspective. Julian is a sucker for a good beard. That's because Sean Sullivan does it. Yeah. That's true. So she just admitted it to the world. Uh, she's suckered into Sean. Not necessarily anything <laughs> real there. Just I'm, I've been suckered in. Uh, that's what I'm with <laughs> I like uh, to be snuckered. No, I cannot grow a beard because my work, my work will not allow me to have a beard. Oh yeah, it's, it's weird. I work for I'm a 911 public safety dispatcher, police, yeah. fire, and EMS, and all of our rules were written in the 70s. So oh. mustaches are fine, but the beards, no go. I don't get it. That, that was the Cincinnati Reds policy up until exactly. like up until like up until like 2010. You I weren't can... allowed to have a beard, but you could have a mustache. Exactly. Like you could tell when they wrote that. Like 
<laughs> Somebody exactly lobbied for it. It was, it was no facial hair. And then in 1976, they're like, how about mustaches? Like, all right, mustaches are they're okay. They're okay. <laughs> Adam, are you a Reds fan? Yeah, a Cincinnati Reds fan. Yeah, I'm from Ohio. So I, uh, I once was on a flight from Baltimore to Sarasota, Florida with uh, Chris Sabo. Nice. I sat next to him. Oh, that's that next great. Table plane. Oh. oh, that's awesome. That's great. Yeah, he was. That was. And it's funny, you know. I had a, I had a, I had a slow rise into getting into baseball. Like, I mean, I was a Star Wars kid. I didn't play baseball and stuff. But at some point, I just kind of got into it. We had really good radio announcers and stuff in Cincinnati. And uh, uh, the year I just started listening to every game was the year they went to the World Series, uh, uh, wire to wire, and won the won the World Series. And I was like. I'm done. I did it. I, I listened to the, every game that season, they, and they went ahead and won the World Series for me. And I'm like, all right, that's. I'll go out that way. There you go. There you go. <laughs> but I did. I did meet Eric Davis in a uh, club in L.A. once. That's awesome. Eric, you know, Eric Davis from the '80s Reds. Yes, my favorite. Thank you, Thank you Ken Napsa. Nick Assassin. Yeah, right? <laughs> Nick Assassin. He was one of my favorite Reds because he went to the Red Sox eventually, just for a little bit. So. Just ask you the Red Sox. Yeah, that was that was. Uh, he was a Red when I was a kid. He was, he was good. Uh, all right, got two, two or three bar we'll do. We'll throw one out there. Go for it. Venkman or Spangler? Better Bill Murray. They are talking about, by the way, over in the chat, they're Wait. talking about, we got three ninjas. We're talking about three ninjas. I just say there's a whole other world going on. They've got their own conversation going on. It's that happens a lot. You'll find it. Yeah, that's funny. <laughs> Wait, Venkman or Spangler? You just asked a Spangler question. Oh, Venkman or Spangler? Better or Bill Murray. Spackler. Spackler. Oh, Spackler. Oh, oh, Venkman or Spackler. That's a uh, Venkman. You got to like Venkman. Oh, yeah, yeah, Venkman, definitely. Venkman. Okay, fair enough. He's just got so much point of view. There's so much going on with that guy of how he's trying to work the situation, being more of a sham artist. Like yeah. e like Egon and Ray, you're like, these guys really are into the paranormal and all that, you know, that sort of stuff. And he's like, you know, of course, he's the TV psychic before they make him a TV psychic. But that character is like, yeah. Beautiful, Some right. sort of Dodger hustle. That's the line in the, uh, in the movie. Right. And, and I'll take any Bill Murray, but I'll take Bill Murray lead. Over most things, so yeah, fair enough. Oh yeah, even, true. Though, even though it's three guys, it's kind of a it's lead. It Carl is, shows yeah. up every once in a while. The one thing about Caddyshack that doesn't put it over the top for me of the greatest comedies of all time is all the caddies. Mm -hmm. Like we just yeah. not have the caddies and just get back to Dangerfield, Ted Knight, <laughs> Chevy, and Bill Murray. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. You know? well, and, and that's a movie that should absolutely be remade because, like, the teen part of that movie doesn't work at all, and. and yeah. there's Teen part does work, or you know, Breakfast Club, or Sixteen Candles, or you know, uh, that sort of thing. It's like, man, if you could make Caddyshack and get the teen part working, and then have all the stratus of people, and just fill that with like current comedians and stuff to to play out those sort of slobs versus snobs. I'm like, yeah, that that movie should hold up better than it does, and that that's one of the reasons why. Yeah, yeah, you get Sidakis to play Ty, right? Yeah. Oh, hell yes! Oh, Any day of the week, twice on Sunday. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That would work. Wow, mm -hmm. I like that. Ooh. My choice before he got in trouble when I thought about remaking it for the because the, the tough one to re recast is Carl Spackler, but yeah. before he got in trouble, Kevin Spacey was my choice. Ah, uh, Galifianakis. Galifianakis. Zach Galifianakis. Mm -hmm. Oh, Galifianakis. That, that would be. be that oh, be yeah, that is Carl Spackler, right? That awkward sort of like in his own world, like yeah. got his own rules and thinks you want to care about some of these little things. And yeah. I see that. All right. All right. <laughs> okay. Yeah, got two more. Two more. Would you like to go on a tangent? That's what one. I was about to say. <laughs> <laughs> That's That's not not a tangent or tangent? <laughs> Just for my personal you, you, I'm a big alien kid. V um, or Alien oh, Nation? Which uh, was the question? V or Alien Nation? I go Alien Nation because oh. it started as a movie. I'm a movie guy. Mm. Done. V. Yes. Be for me. I, I'm a movie guy, but that the way that captured your imagination on TV and the idea that and I, and I don't know how well it was put forward that they were lizards underneath these human. Fa I mean, come on, you're gonna pop off a human face, you're gonna you know, and there's a lizard underneath. That is amazing, and that sort of like we come in peace, but we're here to trick you, sort of thing. Mm -hmm. And it, it uh, that that was pretty cool. That was I a lot, and of course it has my man Mark Singer. Donovan. Mike Donovan. Mark Singer, man. I love yeah. that. Exactly. I'm a big V yeah. fan myself, and I have the same reason. Mark Singer. You ever you ever run into Mark Singer at a uh, Comic-Con? I have. I have. He's 
Hi, 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 how are you? Hi, 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 I'm Donovan from, from V. Hi, you ever seen Beast? Hi, how are you? Oh, hold on one second. Hi, hi. I mean, the guy's right. so... Beastmaster, hey. I could be a Beastmaster here. Hi, how are you? Like, it's just everybody. And he'll be talking to you, but he'll be constantly flagging other people over. Yeah, yeah, so I was Beastmaster. Hi, hi, how are you? Hi, hi. A lot of energy. I was Beastmaster. Hi. Yeah, he's a lot of energy. He's a lot of energy. Funny guy. Beastmaster, TBS classic. Beastmaster is, yes, that's true. Funny story about Beastmaster. Again, here we are on a tangent. Paul and I saw that in the theater. I had never seen that as a kid. And I'm obsessed with seeing movies that if I'd seen when a kid, I would have really been obsessed with. That's one of them. I can't believe I never saw it. And then we finally saw it in the theater. And that movie is really well made. I yeah. mean, it holds yeah. up big time. We went to the Egyptian. Like that movie does a lot of special. Yeah, the Egyptian. And we saw it with double feature with the sword and the sorcerer. And I expected sword and the sorcerer to be the better of the two movies because it had that old school sort of grimy 80s. You know, fantasy vibe, but uh, it ended up being kind of murky. But Beastmaster was fun and and uh, jaunty, and uh, yeah, that was great. Yeah, and Coscarelli yeah. was there for Q and A. It was cool. Yeah, okay. but he did such a good job on that movie. And you see that all the thirty other movies that year that are anything like Beastmaster are horrible. Yeah. <laughs> and you just, you just. But I mean, I loved him as a kid and stuff. And so I love that sword and sandal, sword and sorcery yeah. kind of thing. But uh, but that one's a really actual good movie. I was shocked. It's uh... the rest from that. You're looking more like Beastmaster's Portals of Time or the sequels to Beastmaster. Have you ever seen any of those? No. No, but Ooh. there should be hundreds of those movies. I'm glad they're sequels, even if <laughs> I haven't seen them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the original Beastmaster definitely does hold up. But speaking of Beastmaster, I did have that because of your shirts, Mark Singer or Yafit Koto, because you have the two shirts. Which one are you going to go with? I go with Yafit Koto. And you got to go with Mark. I mostly. <laughs> I most, I <laughs> love Yafit Koto. Uh, Yafit Koto is amazing. Yeah. I just love him man. so much. I think I could, I could just make some Running Man, Live and Let Die. Alien. Yeah. yeah, there's more movies. Oh, Alien, pick. Midnight Run. Oh, yeah. he's so good. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Mark Singer, I got. Beastmaster, B, V, uh, yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Arrow last season. Was he in the Eliminators? Uh, oh, he, he may very well have been. I think he was in the, Eliminators. the Eliminators. There's there's a cyborg with with tank treads for Is that Corman. Feet. Mm. No, yeah. I, I'm so sure like the a... video box cover was painted by the same guy that painted the Exterminators of the Year 3000. That's about all I know. One <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, those totally painted. Right. You know, <laughs> Master Mark Singer also, I think, was in Scanners 2, I believe it was. Uh, with, Mark Singer, yes, he was. Because if I find uh, it's a V fan, because it was Michael Ironside in the first one, Ham Tyler was in the first one, and yeah, yeah. the second one, so it's that too. Um, okay, one more. I you should get Michael Ironside on this. I would yeah, like you should get Michael oh, Ironside on this. Big be great. <laughs> oh, he's great, it's amazing, right? Uh, I love but, Total Recall. Oh, totally. His 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 well, his role in Total Recall was basically Ham Tyler from V, just a little more evil. It was he wore the same jacket, he had almost the same gun. It was it was pretty much that's the same character. Yeah, I love spitting villainy. Love Paul. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry. I get I get on tangents. I love V. I get. It. <laughs> I think I would mention Ed Harris yet on this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> if you start Ed Harris, my Ed Harris walk through, we would be here all night. You know that. So. Oh, I thought you said a heresy. Now I'm thinking of an Ed heresy. Like the school of Ed Harris is like, like the church of Ed Harris. It's like, I can give you an Ed heresy. Needful things. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> an Ed heresy. <laughs> Still love it. Never mails in a performance. Always in the hundred percent. In the category of Ed Heresy. <laughs> I'm pushing it. That's a oh, Alamo Bay. That's a Kananga balloon. Tim Franco says Kananga balloon. So uh, <laughs> and a very pigeon double take to you, Tim Franco. Sorry, we're speaking uh podcast. <laughs> uh, all right, we'll do one more, one more. So for a new movie slash on the trip movie trivia showdown, are we gonna go with movie dicks or porn? Oh, movie dicks! Movie well, I mean, dicks. the Karate Kid. That the what's what's that's a movie dick. The movie dick is a whole different, a whole tons of questions on that. I well, mean, who are the best movie dicks? That's true. Oh. I'll tell you. I, I need to say the young sung unsung heroes uh, of the movie dicks here today, so their names get remembered. You know who Robert Prescott is? Robert Prescott. You should know his name Wait, because uh, Victor Victoria. He, <laughs> he he played two bad guys in the '80s that were wildly different. He played Kent in Real Genius. Oh! And before oh, that, yeah. he played uh, Tawny Katane's boyfriend, whose name I forget, in Bachelor Party. 
who was a rich snob. So he did the rich snob and the nerd in the same decade, both effectively in two classic movies. Okay. And we don't know his name. We should. Right. The guy works all yeah, the time. Right. He still works. Um, so he clearly doesn't need us to remember him. But Robert Preston. Oh, he is an unsung hero. Yes. Yeah. Cole Whittier. That's what he is in, ba- in Bachelor Party. Oh, good, good. That's yes, that's I haven't seen Bachelor Party since the week we got the VCR. <laughs> With VCR. VCR. <laughs> that's that's well, you know. And by the way, can I just say something? Because I have this conversation all the time. We somehow gotten this this thing about how everything, you know, we expecting movies to be free and all this sort of stuff. When they invented the VCR and we got a VCR for the first time in 1987, we rented $20 of movies every week for years. And then suddenly there's like nobody's like renting movies. And like the other night, like I, I was with a friend of mine. They're like, oh, I'd like to see that movie. Let's see if it's on Hulu. What on Hulu? Let's see if it's on Netflix. What on Netflix? So I go. Well, then I'll rent it. It's like, nah, don't worry about it. I'm like, I used to spend $20 a week <laughs> uh, or a weekend. We'd rent like 10 movies and we'd watch them all day, all night. And I'm mm-hmm. like, I'm renting movies and it's my industry. You know, technically. Uh, makes sense. True. Rent some movies. Renting movies. Blockbuster in Hollywood and the mom and pop shops. I always love the mom and pop shops, except for the fact that they always had that back room you couldn't go into. <laughs> That you're not oh, but you waited till that day you could, and when you could, then you got back and you're so disappointed. You're like, oh, yeah, yeah. that's well, you know, you know, you that 1970s porn mustache in 19, you know, when you were 12 and you just walked. <laughs> I, I did have. I was a very, uh, very old man at first. So, you know, what was, defines the difference between a mustache and a porn mustache? Is it the fullness? A little too much mustache, right? <laughs> it's it's the porn mustache. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, as Kaiser said the other day, it's a slimier mustache. That's what he said. Yeah, mm-hmm. porn guys don't have mustaches today, so it definitely no. reeks of seventies too. Right. I think. Absolutely. Yeah. So, yeah. all right, that's what we'll wrap up this or that. Uh, I'm told. So, Danny. Back to you. That's it. This or that is over. (laughs) (laughs) So you all know what that means. Chat, make sure that you get your questions in. If you asked a question earlier inside of the chat and did not get to it or get to ask it, make sure that you bring it up again so our sweet, wonderful Kelsey in the background can make sure to get that popped up so we can make sure that we get your questions asked. Woo, woo, woo. So while we do that, chat, while we let you all do that, uh, Paul, Billy, and I are just going to plug some things for the Call to Action Network. And we're super pumped and super excited about what we have coming up for the next few weeks for Chill. Paul, I'll let you talk about all of that good stuff. Oh, for Chill. That's right. Uh, next week on Chill, we are welcoming OG Action Army member. Uh, long time coming, Janine the Machine. Uh, nice. Love, love Janine. Janine. We love Janine. It's, it's, I can't believe it's been so long that we haven't had her on yet. Yeah. So in our chats. We love oh, she's her. so fun. Oh, and she actually just created a new shirt that you can look for on her network for Brandon the Hot Man, Hannah. Not oh, did she do a Hot Man shirt? She did a Hot Man shirt. I hope I don't know how long it's going to be up there. I mean, Christian make it a little mad. That was a typo, right? <laughs> hot Man, yeah. Hitman. Yeah. By Jake Yacoveta in the chat. Yeah. <laughs> Jake Yacoveta in one of our chats slipped up and said Hot Man once, and we have run with it ever since. Well, it's funny as. Yeah, somebody somebody said like, ah, that's too much of an inside joke, and I'm like, not now. <laughs> now everybody knows it. It's not an inside joke anymore. It's been made a thing. <laughs> the audience loves it. We should go with yeah. it. And I got a shout out to Janine because when she, uh, through no prompting, developed a Karen's Army uh, graphic, hmm. I'm forever grateful for that. It's it's used at nothing by time. Her brother, um, my Karen's brother, is yeah going to put that on. A bass drum for his, uh, oh, for his band. He plays awesome. in a rock band back in uh, in New York. That's so uh, yeah, so Speaking. that that's getting a lot of use. It's the Facebook page for the yeah. Karen's Army page. It's you know, <clears> top, <throat> and um, some friends of mine showed me T-shirts they made with it. So uh, uh, I'm grateful that yeah. she just was inspired to do that. And you know, that's, as we all know, she's awesome. So, oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And I will actually make that side as one of our favorite moments in call history was when we had the. The fundraiser that we had for Karen, and she actually that was amazing. Yeah, that and that happened that. the night before that Bateman match too. So I'm sitting there, you know, choking back the tears that hey, I don't know any of these people, and they just got online. And that just is what's great about the Schmodown. I said this at the show, but that's what's great about the Schmodown is that here's six people I don't know raising right. money for me, you know, and, right. and Karen, uh, who they don't know really. I mean, you've seen us, but you don't know, and uh, but now we all do because of. Uh, acts of kindness like that. So it was amazing. 
And I know, yeah. speaking of that, speaking of Jake Akaveta, we're going to combine those last two topics together. But I want to know, make sure you're okay with putting the bracelet on everyone and having them do Karen's Army posts in Atlanta. I don't know if you saw all those posts that they did. Oh, you can't put that hashtag or the bracelets in too many places. Thank you, Jim. Yeah, fair enough, fair enough. Um, but oh, yeah. now we'll transition back out to the rest of the plugs, and then we'll get back to the chat questions. Uh, the week after, Janine, back to you. We are having back to me. <laughs> we'll be having on uh, Lon Harris, the delinquent. We'll be here uh, for one more. <laughs> one more. <laughs> and then the week after that, we have one more week booked out right now. Okay. That would be Ethan Big Time Irwin will be on our show. So looking for producer. <laughs> Big time. Yeah. yeah. Anything you want to plug, Danny? Um, oh, no, you can just find me on Twitter um, at Danny Joy D A N I. Do the, do the puppet thing, Adam. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, wait, oh, oh, wait, oh, wait. Uh, uh, work them out. <laughs> go ahead. Now, yeah, there you go. <laughs> you can find me here every day. All that actual action. <laughs> you can find me on Twitter. All that good stuff. That's all <laughs> And of course, I believe. I correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe are we having a movie guys week on uh, Call to Action? We and are going to be on the Schmo Bates on Wednesday. Yes. So there we you are. Go. Yeah. It is a movie guys week on Call to Action. Yeah, Showdown tears cool. them apart. We're bringing it back together. That's where we go on and we screw with the two guys who are debating, right? Pretty much as much as you can. Yeah. You Oh, that's not the that's not the one where you masturbate. That must be something else I was invited to. All <laughs> right, I better be check those Patreon emails. <laughs> that's a Patreon extra that we're going to develop. <laughs> Schmo baiting, <laughs> no way baiting. <laughs> uh, Billy, anything you no want? No way, Schmo baiting. <laughs> Please, some of you have the audio drop. I'll make it for you. Go away, Schmo baiting. Schmo <laughs> baiting. Jake will clip that out. Jake clipped it out for us. Okay. Is that a quick uh, I just want to say, I'm pretty sure that Janine hasn't been on because the last time she was on one of our shows, uh, someone ate a fly, which is really just inappropriate. That's true. Um, actually, I could actually yeah, you, that one. You can find me uh, at Mr. Billy Belford on Twitter. That's right. That's what happened last time Janine was actually on call to action way before Chill Ash. Chill Ash. <laughs> what is happening in that shot? That was a, uh, she, she was interviewing and a fly actually flew directly into her mouth and down her throat while she was interviewing. <laughs> what a Raiders so of the Lost Ark moment. Fly girl. <laughs> you can see Janine's reaction in the bottom right corner bottom right laughing, right hysterically. laughing hysterically at her. <laughs> so that's a Belloc move, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right, so let's get into these questions. Kelsey, you want to start bringing up questions? Kelsey's going to do that for us, so why you can read up. Question, if asked to risk it was an 80s action movie, who would you want to star in it? JCVD, Stallone, or Schwarzenegger? Asked to risk. Asked to risk. <laughs> asked I got gotcha. you. Let's work this out. What are, uh, Remind me of my three options here, right? So mm -hmm. an asterisk is an addendum, right? And the right. best movies are things that are named something that mean two things. Mm -hmm. So what is the asterisk? That hit makes his ass to risk. So there's some sort of contract. I'm thinking that's a little more. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> there's your uh, frame. There's your frame. <laughs> ass to risk. I think it's a it's, Van Damme flick. I don't know. Oh, it's definitely a Van Damme flick. But 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 who like concentrated more on their ass in cinema history? Oh, like who's got more ass shots? Like Stallone oh, was naked. Stallone was naked in showers, like in the '90s, like with Sharon Stone. What was that movie? The Special Specialist. Specialist. Oh, that was wait, there is a, there is an agreed upon name, huh? Nobody liked that one the best. They're like, <laughs> I don't know if we call it the Special. Will you guys shut up? <laughs> whatever, whatever the answer Adam comes up with, this is a canon film, right? Oh, <laughs> oh yes, right. yes. <laughs> Who uh, Golan Globus? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we'll Ask to risk. Ask to risk. Ask to risk. I'm gonna say Stallone because he has got way more ass shots. The guy was obsessed with his ass. That is true. I'll go with that. Like have you guys ever seen have you guys ever seen Stand Alive, by the way? Oh hell yes. Yeah. That is is that not the best worst movie? <laughs> That's the note that's a category, and people will say Gnome 2 or whatever the hell that is. But uh, who really yeah. enjoys watching Troll? Troll yeah. yeah. Troll, yeah. Who really enjoys watching that? But man, you watch Staying Alive, you're like, what yeah, is yeah. happening? And I don't really care because I'm going to keep watching because this is. 
<laughs> that is a good player, is it? I love that one. <laughs> directed by directed by Stallone, and he can afford so much coke, and you could tell. <laughs> You know, that's so good. <laughs> and, and, it, and it's a sequel to a movie that defined disco with like the greatest disco soundtrack. And who are you going to get to follow the Bee Gees? I don't know. I'm thinking Frank Stallone. I mean, that's Frank like an ego move. Like, to replace the Bee Gees, I'm thinking Frank Stallone. Frank Stallone and the composer of the Transformers, the movie soundtrack, which is literally what that that is. <laughs> Really is. I've got a whole podcast on that anyway. Listen. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Kelsey. What's next, Kels? Is powder keg. Oh, wait. Can powder... I just say one more quick thing? Go ahead. Go Shout ahead. out to, to, uh, to Garth, right? Uh, Garth and Murray. Yep. Yeah. Just what an active uh, Schmodown fan. Oh, yeah. absolutely. Oh, I'm not surprised he chimed in here because the guy's everywhere loving on this thing. So <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I'm a fan of his now. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, love great. Garth. Garth's a good yeah. guy. <laughs> Damn, I'm lukewarm on them. Powder keg. <laughs> powder keg inspired by LeBron James. What's the origin of the powder keg? Uh, well, you know, I don't know if we're giving away secrets of the Schmodown here, but it's quite often that the Schmodown names you. Uh, okay, uh, yeah. So I was competing, and, you know, Christian came back, powder keg. And I think it's just because I have the protein powder. So they picked a name that was, you know, energetic and exciting. Uh, they like alliteration yeah. too. They love oh, Powder King, Preston. Yeah, you know. that's true. Yeah. So I Whatever think all those things came into play. Alliteration, I'm like, I'm like, how did this happen? Who didn't get alliteration? <laughs> yeah. Razor wit, that makes perfect sense, but like well then and, and, like, and then I, I did I came the, up with that one. Did you? And I did the LeBron move uh after yeah, that. Yeah. And that I don't want to take credit for either. That was actually um uh, Jen Sturger's suggestion. Oh, and, uh, you know, oh. it might have come to me after a while, but she had it right away and said, You gotta do that. I'm like, oh, that's gonna happen. Yeah. Which, right. by the way, is highlight a, reel is, is, always is a know? Kevin Garnett move. Mm, KG, I All like right. your question, but that's the KG did the uh, very did true the, did the powder along before that. But that, but that's been on every highlight reel ever since, Paul. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's, yeah, I, I had to. Which, which reminds me of the very first thing that happened. W Paul and I, the first match we did was the free for all, mm -hmm. which is such an amazing event. I mean, I had the greatest. That was the very first thing we did with the Schmodown. I mean, can you imagine? That's your first thing, just go out on stage, <laughs> which is awesome. But, uh, but uh, Paul was one of the people knocked out by Bibiani in the right? straight sweep. So Paul walks off stage and he's like, ah, yeah, I mean, of course he's upset. It's like, you know, it's a, it's a major strike or whatever. And I was like, Paul, you just made the, the highlight reel for the rest of all time. You're right there during that thing. And sure enough, every highlight reel, there's Paul right next to him. Oh, like, no, okay, I, I, that's not how I wanted to make the highlight reel. I Adam. know, I know. Right? <laughs> but at least you made the highlight reel. I yeah. wanted to win the football games in gym class too, but I made the people laugh and I just made something out of that instead. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Jillian Marie, after this corona nonsense is over, can we please plan a night to party at Scum and Villainy? Oh, God, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. We should play oh. some. some <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. What is Scum and Villainy? It's a Star Wars themed uh, restaurant, cafe, or I mean, a bar in uh, Hollywood, on Hollywood Boulevard. And it looks just like the Moss Eisley Cantina Bar. Everybody dresses up inside. Uh, and the, yeah, it's, it's, it's a, it's a pretty fun place. They have Star Wars themed drinks. So you can just get a beer or whatever, but you know, if you're going to go overpay for a beer anyway in Hollywood, you're like, I feel, I feel like I'm going to be in Star Wars for a few minutes. How about that? You know? Well, it used to have, it used to have timed entrances, right? But now I think you can just go yeah. in, right? Yeah. It's open for full. It was an experimental thing for like a couple months and they had to get tickets and all this stuff. But now it's just, now it's just another bar in Hollywood, which is <laughs> fantastic you know that's why we live in this town it's like yeah you might end up in the moss Eisley cantina and i couldn't say that in ohio definitively <laughs> <laughs> because when i go see beastmaster don coscarelli's doing a q a not happening right in upstate new york so yeah uh, we went to go that's see enough. iron man iron man 2 opening night at the arc light and unannounced just because they were around robert downey jr and john favreau walk out and go hey we didn't plan on coming and speaking but we were around so you know well, why not <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, we should go see Kevin Smith do his podcast there. Someone just said. I think uh, he still does that there. He does. That podcast might he might be done with that podcast though. I don't know. I think he still does it. Does he? I think I think I've seen a recent something. I think he up. took a break. I think he took a break for a bit because he was doing. I was going to uh, say the feed kind of stopped tour. a while back. Because he did the reboot tour. I think something that like he talked Jay and Silent Bob reboot on tour. I think that might have been something to do with it. 
Yeah. Oh, that's true. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. He's not going to be able to regularly podcast with that going on. Well, he's got all the time in the world now, so I'd expect him to have five more podcasts this week. Bring it on now. <laughs> yeah. All right, the Schmo way. Who is your, who is your favorite Schmo down character besides yourselves? Well, uh, hmm. might be the professor. Because I think, you know, we talked about we were pitching the – the bros that we became and then the moguls we were pitching the critics too like uh, yeah we didn't know i thought that's a real funny bit and he and jonathan both uh, lon and jonathan both have uh, embraced that and, and kicked it out of the park i thought always with the references that were so deep and stupid and that i, I enjoyed <laughs> watching the professor and I, you know i'm certainly going to enjoy watching the delinquent too yeah yeah but the professor was was yeah. great because yeah, you know it, when you could draw. And they're good at those characters too. Yeah, and they yeah, can back it, it up. It's great. Most obscure references, and it was oh. one of the, actually before we even appeared at the free for all. The first thing we attended with the Schmodown was the awards the year before, and they right, right, introduced right. an award, and I was just like, "Who are these guys?" <laughs> like, uh, I was pretty impressed with the way they were uh, dropping <laughs> Japanese directors <laughs> I've never even heard of, and I was like, "I love it." More, more I haven't heard, please, because that's hilarious. All right. <laughs> I would agree. The professor was a kind of an underrated one, I think. Mm -hmm. yeah. But the delinquents fun. I like he, was, uh, he faced Cody Hall and he brought out a syllabus for everyone. <laughs> and it was a legitimate syllabus. For the, for the oh, he chose to commit. <laughs> That's great, um, Malcolm. Yeah, I like all the little bits like that, like th that sort of thing, or the fanny pack. Uh, <laughs> the case fanny pack. Oh. I mean, that's just like uh, go for it and just yeah. And please, you know, sometime have the camera cut off and just pull like a, you know, like the Bugs Bunny, you know, back yeah. out of it or something. That's where I would <laughs> well, go with that. All right, I'll pass that along. Or that's fun. Do that. I love physical bits like that. Just frame the camera low enough and just pull a chain out or whatever, you know, just like a <laughs> Pee Wee's Big Adventure. Love it. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Malcolm's Middle Earth Media. What movie that was moved due to COVID nineteen were you most looking forward to? There's one answer to that. Pretty Black Widow. Oh well, now that's Black moved. Oh, sorry, yeah. No time to die. No, no uh, time. To die. Yeah, that's good too. Go on. That movie's gonna rock, even if it sucks. Yeah, great director. <laughs> yeah, great, uh, great looking trailer. I mean, great yeah. villain. Robin Craig Alex. Is, and Craig doesn't do enough movies actually either. I mean, Logan Lucky was two, three years ago now. So, mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. Knives Out and No Time mm -hmm. to Die back to back, we deserve. So, now pushing this off kind of sucks. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. But Black Widow, I mean, I'm such an MCU fan. It's, I mean, they can't yeah. do anything wrong. No. They can't do anything wrong. They're going they to kill did. it. It's amazing. They're going to kill it. It's amazing. Yeah. It's amazing. And when you look at the, the little micro moves they're making within the genre of superhero and how... They didn't for Cap, Cap, Captain Marvel. They there are twenty different ways to do that that they've already done. There's an Iron Man way to tell her to tell that story. There's a you know whatever, and they're like, no, we're gonna we're gonna take all those chess pieces and throw them down. We're gonna tell it in that order and mm -hmm. see so that it'll be different. And you know, like, and it just ends up being this like full experience. And you're like, they're still challenging themselves to tell these stories in a new way or master the old versions of telling the stories. I loved how after they were done creating the Avengers over the course of four movies that they then created the event. Then they were like, you could see the personal challenge in Kevin Feige going, yeah, but could we create one in a single movie? And then it's Guardians <laughs> of the Galaxy. And you're like, they did it. They could create a, a whole Avengers in one movie. What and remember, the common knowledge was you couldn't have more than one villain in a movie. Batman Returns was so terrible because they had two villains. That's three characters total. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I'm actually and, and there was uh, no other franchise gets better when you add more characters. And yeah, the best right? movies oh, in yeah. the Avengers franchise are Endgame, mm -hmm. 2012 Avengers, mm -hmm. Infinity War, and Civil War, in my opinion. And that's yeah, with all the yeah. all the characters. Also, yeah. they got everybody. Their ability to completely reinvent a character in the middle of this run, because Thor was like, "Who cares?" And then Thor Ragnarok comes out, and all of a sudden, he's like everyone's favorite character. It's awesome. It's awesome. Although yeah. I will say, I have to say, I had to bring this up. I will say, I, I'm a big Marvel Hercules fan. So basically, what they did was they took Thor and made him into Hercules for Ragnarok. That's pretty much all they did. So uh, now I'm never going to get a Hercules movie because that's basically yeah. his character. <laughs> that's no one knows who Hercules is, Paul, except for you. All right. Was I Ed do. Harrison I do. I, he was an Avenger. 
He was an <laughs> Avenger, that's right. Yes. He you was know? a West Coast Avenger. Those don't count. The West Coast Avenger is the best. Moon Knight. And Tony Ooh. Stark. Tony Stark was <laughs> a West Coast Avenger. He was an Avenger number 50 or number 49. He was an East Coast Avenger the whole time. One of the first uh, replacements. So there we go. We were arguing on MCU. I'm on so. call to comics. What <laughs> 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 happened? I blame Gravity 23. What did you see uh, that out in the desert the day you found Tom? <laughs> dude, dude, I didn't see just Tom, right, bro? Like, it was Tom. He was riding a dragon, okay? And the dragon talked to me. The dragon said, dude, this is your new partner, bro. And I was like, what? Man, I want a dude who rides a dragon to be my partner. I think to be badass, right? And so I started drinking a lot of protein powder. Then I snorted some. Don't tell anybody that that started me. Then I started seeing some crazy stuff, right? Because of the stuff that I already took in the ayahuasca. And then Kate appeared in a cloud and she took me away from there and she took me to the hospital. And that's where I woke up, bro, in the hospital. <laughs> or something like that. I don't know. <laughs> he was scouting out a location for his. We had so many jokes we didn't do for the movie, guys. One of them was the smoke festival. <laughs> which was like the this uh, fire festival or whatever. I think you were scouting a location for your smoke festival when that happened. Yes, there was another one where uh, he was a Tom was a pledge brother of my of a of a he was like yeah a he was a legacy of a leg fraternity cousin. legacy yeah yeah so I was sad like your frat buddy but you had to be friends with <laughs> yeah him. he's a legacy <laughs> he's a little weird though. <laughs> No, you got to help him out. He got my friend a job. <laughs> I know that Nerd Chronic watches us a lot. I haven't seen the chat, but Eric, if you could take that and make that part of a promo, we would be very appreciative. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Kelsey, what's next? Dean Morgan, what was the best experience you guys had with Christian before the showdown started? Well, we would run into each other changing over. They were the show after us at, at Toad Hop. So a lot of the fun we had was sort of the conversations we'd have uh, while setting up and stuff like that, running into Christian in the hall. Uh, and then we ran into him at Comic-Con and stuff. We kept running him into him in different places. Mostly what I remember is they would come in. I feel like I've had this so many times in my life in so many different ways. Uh, you know, whether it's in a small theater doing improv or something like that. Excuse me, let me pick up all these props. You've got all these random <laughs> yeah. props. Oh, sorry, that's my rubber chicken. Sorry. Yeah, no, I can explain that, you know, whatever. Because we would do all these jokes and stuff, and there was a video feed to that. We'd have all these costumes and stuff like that, and they would have to come in and start their show quickly. I just remember cleaning up a lot of costumes around them and having him and Marco, like, trying to piece together like what we did that night. But a lot of times they would show up early and watch our skits, you know, through the window and stuff too. So yeah, that's what I mostly remember. From yeah. And, and once after we were there for a while, he just invited me out to coffee. I thought that was cool. You know, he oh, was telling cool. me all the stuff he did and all the, uh, I, things they were doing at the schmoes and then places where I could go and meet people and try and get something going. Like I tried to get a show going over at, uh, after buzz right is that the one yeah after buzz yeah oh, for a while but it never 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 came about mm -hmm. but um yeah and clearly then nothing really came about until the showdown and now we're all in with these guys again and, it is it uh, is funny uh, to it, think it of how nice. it's funny to think of how pats meet though because i know we were talking about trying to do some of the popcorn talk and pitching them a show or the after buzz and all the old clips i see of the old showdown show they were they were at after buzz i think weren't they for, pop for a bit, yeah. But it was like yeah. we would have run into them again if we'd, uh, you know, really get on over there. It's just funny. We would have ended up being doing a show with them again before we right? did this. Yeah. All right. Next, Kelsey. All right. From JJ Winward, Pierce Brosnan and Mamma Mia, yay or nay? <laughs> uh, I'll I let mean, Paul take this one. If you're going to get rid of him, you got to get rid of all the guys in the cast, right? Because yeah. there's no winner there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like if you want to replace him with some great Broadway singer that nobody knows but would be better in the part, that's probably not a bad idea. But uh, it's fun watching those guys. I don't know. I wish I didn't cry at Mamma Mia, uh, <laughs> Here We Go Again, but I did. So I, uh, I can't say change it at all. Leave it. Yay. Yay. All right. Okay. <laughs> Yay. More movies. Yay. More movies. Yay. Be positive. Always. Brosnan and Mamma Mia, for sure. Love what you love, man. Like what you like. Yeah. 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 That's you guys. That's great. 
<laughs> Rob Adam, not a question. Hey, we're just hanging out with you all and answering questions at the spectacular. We like the cinema fanatics. So that. That yeah, we, that was fun. Yeah, yeah, that was totally fun. Were we sitting next to them, in front of them? At the spectacular, oh, I remember? No, we met oh, not the, spectacular. Uh, the we met them. It was the fan fest. We met yes. them there, signing, fest. signing Brendan oh, yeah, yeah, and yeah. Christian's. Uh, Photos. Yes, I got the Ben Bateman. That's right. That's, right. Ben that's right. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We were signing photos of other players, <laughs> and I think handing handing out John Roca's number is what you were doing too. I think. And we had yes. Yeah. Did uh, anybody had... call that? That was a great bit we worked out with him. Or if you called it, he was all pissed off that we were giving out his number on an outgoing message. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And it was him. You know, we asked him to do it. We got him to do it. That's so great. If you still have that number. Call in and uh, it's probably still that, right? <laughs> well, it's, it's, still, it's still there. You can still call that number. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't. I, I, I'll find out what the number is because yeah, you can still yeah. call that number and it still is an outgoing voice message. The joke was that we were, you know, uh, giving out John Roca's phone number and he recorded a voicemail that said, ah, "Look, I appreciate you calling and being a fan, but I, the movie guys were not supposed to give out my number. I don't even know." They weren't even supposed to be at the spectacular, really. <laughs> <laughs> but he recorded the whole thing for us. It was a great little. Yeah, he was so put out. It's, it's I tell you, if you find the number, or if I find the number, I'll have to look and see. We'll we'll pass it out to people. I'm looking okay. it up here. And I don't think that, that was always one of my favorite things from uh, the show. How I Met Your Mother was that everything that they did as a bit on the show actually worked. Like every website that they had on the show worked. Every yeah, phone oh, number that's they had great. I don't know what phone numbers are, are about, but I think if you mention a website on the TV show, you like have to own it. I think it's like required. And oh, a, I, think so, yeah. I think so. Yeah. Or you have to, it has to be, you can't, yeah, some sort of thing. Obviously you could say Google or whatever and that's fine. But if you bring up a website, you have to make it a thing, I guess. I, there might be something about that. Chime in on the chat also, if you know what I'm talking uh, about. Uh, uh, you reach the personal cell phone. Of John Roca, the outlaw of the Schmodown. Uh, this is a number that is supposed to be for personal and professional use. So I'm recording this voicemail uh, in response to something a couple of fools did that are part of the Schmodown. These guys, I've never heard of them. They're called the Movie Guys, a uh, real original name, these two dudes. But they have nothing better to do than harass your beloved two time singles and team champion by giving out my number at the first fan expo which they weren't even invited to <coughs> and i couldn't even attend because of my bronchitis damn it well leave a message now if you want to i don't know if i'll even listen to it but leave a message now because i'll be changing the number this afternoon as soon as i can get in touch with my cell phone guy all right this is the outlaw signing out five horsemen and all the belts all the records your current tag team champion out <laughs> Here, give me the number. That is brilliant. Everybody probably just heard it. But... Yeah, they just heard it. I guess it's fine. Yeah. <laughs> you know, his real voicemail message probably isn't that far off from that. Like, it probably yeah. is. Yeah. Exactly the same. Time champion. Yeah, right. champion. Current tag team champion. Is going out. I, I'm glad we could air that here because the, I realize it, in my history of like with Paul and other comedians stuff like that, like you do, you go so far for that, <laughs> jokes that were only mattered to people who were there in the spectacular that day. You right. know, you're like these jokes are hilarious and that they don't go past these doors. But I'm glad we could play that because well, I had a I had a smoke festival flyer on our table and it mm -hmm. had a QR code. Did anybody yeah. scan the QR code? I that we had some interesting shit for you if you did, but no anybody whole bit, anybody did. Whole bit there. The whole bit. Bit. That fire was sitting down on my table for so long, for such a long time, and I just I think I just recently put it away, like put it in a box or something. I'm <laughs> terrible and I don't throw away anything, especially when it comes to the schmo down. <laughs> so I'm gonna have to go and find it and scan that QR code now. <laughs> I'll tell you yeah. what, it basically takes us to a movie guys page yeah. where we have all of our matches, but I've Describe them about how we're dominating them all, or we're the greatest, and we're going to kick everybody's ass. You know, here's us dominating Shazam, you know, etc. So, but we lose, of course. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Whenever, whenever we lose, I just talk about the greatest thing. Uh, that so was probably the problem, even if we lost. <laughs> that was probably the problem. We were all imbibing too much. <laughs> yeah, I've asked. Well, that's. That's that's a, that's a party when everyone comes into town for those things too. It's it's uh that's really fun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, I got to throw it. Kelsey, Rokas voicemail picks up after four rings. How curious is that? 
Never too uh, long for a fourth round joke. It's <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> the gift keeps on giving. All right, Kelsey, go, go to the next one. All right, from Star Drew, what is the greatest 80s comedy movie? All right, I have one no one else is going to mention, uh, but I have. I think it counts. It's dramatic as well, but it's one of my top three movies ever is Broadcast News. Oh, oh so good. That, that, movie's, so good. that movie's so good. And completely prescient, you know, like it, it totally – predicted the style over substance that the news uh, eventually became since 1987. Uh, it's not a flat out fall down hilarious comedy. I mean, that probably the best is airplane in 1980, but mm. uh, I think broadcast is best a, comedy of all time. a masterpiece. Yeah. yeah. Nice. But I mean, ghostbusters yeah. and uh, airplane. And now I've done that thing where every time I ask somebody on our podcast, their favorite movie of all time, they can't just ah, say one. And you ha it happened to you. And I, it happened to I you too, Adam. <laughs> now, Ghostbusters movie. is a perfect movie. Yeah. I could I could discuss the the writing of that movie, the precision of each scene being a sketch with its own little goal and its own little thing. That is a particular type of writing that many seek to emulate and many fail at. Airplane is a whole other matter, but that is a better comedy and it's actually a little more radical in that it is taking a literal other movie called Zero Hour, I believe. And just redoing it with uh, the joke density in Airplane. It, there was nothing like that. I mean, people will com compare it. Maybe one corner of it uh, can be compared to Mel Brooks in terms of parody. But, like, uh, th they invented a whole new language of comedy. They invented a language of comedy in 1979. You know? Joke. Like, yeah. who, who does that? You invent a language of comedy in eight, 1920. You know, like, it's like... Shakespeare. Uh, we, I think we have all the comments, yeah. but yeah. And Adam always brings this up. It's not easy. They just make it look easy. Look at the right. Freeberg and Seltzer movies, your date movie and your superhero mm. movie and your Meet the Spartans where they're trying to do that and not succeeding at the level of airplane. You know, I really but, liked yeah. A Fish Called Wanda for an 80s comedy movie. So yeah. funny. Solid, solid movie. Yes. Yeah. Solid choice, definitely. Academy Award nominated for acting in a comedy. He won. Best supporting Can actor. He yeah. Yeah. Comedians don't get nominated. The yeah. The Academy has declared that, that comedy is not acting. It's not acting. Except for Wanda. We, we, won't, we won't be here all day. Planes, trains, and automobiles. Roxanne. Uh, I mean, yeah. real genius. Uh, Better off dead. I mean, there's so many. It was a heyday. There aren't as many good comedies in a year I'm, span as there are. Yeah, or in a decade span, than there were trade places, vacation. Oh, also, I yeah. asked this to, uh, to Kaiser. If you could get one more movie from one of these three, who would it be? John Candy, Jim Belushi, or um, John Belushi. Uh, John Belushi. Or, yeah. No, I, I, I'm glad Jim Belushi's done making stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Man, I need one more movie out of him. All right, so John, uh, John Belushi, Jim, uh, uh, John Candy, or Chris Farley. Mm. I'd want to see John Candy. Candy. Yeah, Candy. Yeah, Candy. Candy is sorely missing. Who's the John Candy of now? No one. Right. I, I mean, I can't like. There's other people where you go. Oh, he's he's kind of the. Che you went right to it. Who you get to play Chevy Chase? Jason Sudeikis. Oh yes, a very Chevy Chase kind of type. Charming has this sort of thing going on. Who's the John Candy? I mean, that, that's just such a unique know. presence. Come, coming out of Hitch, Kevin James might have been, but then he developed his own thing, and he wasn't quite like yeah. Candy, but. Yeah. yeah, nobody quite like Candy. He just doesn't have the voice. And look at Candy and SCTV. My God, he and, and for all the movies we love about John Candy, he didn't play anybody. He played on SCTV. I don't think he, no. he played one of the Schmanky brothers in the van with the saxophone in Home Alone. But that's as close as I can find. Right, that's it. Oh, wow, Candy. All right, Kelsey. What music do you guys like listening to? Uh, oh, worse than the movies being canceled. I had tickets to Rage Against the Machine. In oh. Oh. oh, and you oh, needed to rage, oh. Paul. <laughs> yeah, I was ready. Uh. Um, they're one of my favorite bands. Uh, I'm a rock and roll guy straight down the middle. Uh, mm. Billy Joel's my favorite ever. Prince, Beatles, it's all that. I'm an adult contemporary. You know, Elton John, I love all that stuff. And then when I go rock, it's like Rage and... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, Van Halen, Van Halen. but um, but that yeah, I I need that concert back. You know, they come out every election year and just remind you everything's. We should be angrier. <laughs> we should be angrier. <laughs> You're not and wrong. 
and they're yeah, I just love them. So hopefully, yeah, I get to see them soon. See what happens. Yeah. I'm a movie scores guy. That's mostly I listen to movie scores stuff like that. Or That's true. yeah, no, I I love movie scores and you know, I uh, was lucky enough to work for some shows at the Hollywood Bowl too with like the you know, big movies and concert and stuff like that. Um, but also yeah, don't, sell that, don't sell that short. That's Adam's an editor and he edits most of the uh, scenes that you see up there that are movie related when the montages and things for John Williams, for oh, wow. James oh, Warner, much. for uh, you know, yeah, black yeah. movie soundtrack, the NASA one. Yeah, yeah I've done I've done I'll John Williams you. last. I did I've done four John Williams shows, uh, video editing for them. You know, oh, okay. which for me, you know, they're like uh, John Williams wants a montage, a nine minute montage of The Force Awakens, which I got to do four years ago. Oh, yeah, man. that was. I could send you a private link to to that video too. I, I, <laughs> yeah, uh, because because Should it's you, a, can you? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I mean, that's I don't the know. QR code next year at Spectacular. Private link. <laughs> <laughs> I keep I keep telling Napsack I'll send them to him because 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 I I don't know uh, you know people that I show them to it just it just this doesn't it's like oh that's kind of neat or whatever but if you're a Star Wars fan John Williams fan you're like oh this really you know because I'm a fan I'm a huge fan oh I'm a huge fan too man I'm actually my friend and my went back in the day like when the prequels after the prequels ended. We actually created our own soundtrack list by cues. We made it this whole new like symphony of Star Wars music where we mixed cues mm -hmm. together and everything else. It was one of the best, most fun times I've ever had in my life doing that stuff. So I, I all aboard that. John Williams. Uh, but, but I got through. Oh, go ahead. I was just say the, the very first thing I ever edited as an editor in college, like when someone showed me, you know, how to edit or whatever. The very first thing I did was throw in Batman and then put Danny Elfman's Batman track and make a Batman montage. It was a very literally the first time I was on an editing machine. And so then a couple of years ago, I, I get this uh, gig doing John Williams thing. And I'm like, everybody, if you're interested in something, just do it. It will come around. It will end up, you know, back in your life, you know, the Schmodown, things like that. Like, uh, it's just, it's just like the fact that every passion has ultimately come around to be like justified is it's just uh, very encouraging. Schmodown's part of that, obviously. But uh, we have a new what the hell is happening in here? I guess <laughs> someone got very mad. He says he uh, did not approve of his voicemail being played on the stream. <laughs> No, we don't I don't want know. Look at that picture. He doesn't look too upset about it. <laughs> hey, well, he he looks like he's hired his lawyer, and his lawyer is him. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. <laughs> hey, what's going on with my voicemail? Have you been injured in an accident? <laughs> Someone sent your voicemail over a podcast. <laughs> Well, that's what it is, John. We, we'll have to we'll we'll cover that news later it's on, John. Guys. <laughs> what do I have to do yeah. to get you in a Chevy today? <laughs> it's seen. I'm running. I'm running. <laughs> oh. Turn the chair around. I don't normally do this, but my boss said I can give you a deal. <laughs> <laughs> Now, I ordinarily never do this. Oh, that, oh, that's a good <laughs> My out lawyers. My out lawyers. Is out lawyer? Is that the movie with Sean Connery in uh, <laughs> Legal Gentleman in Space? Right, out lawyer. Yeah, I knew it in space. Mm -hmm. So Dagny Coleman. Uh... Oh yes, uh, Dabney, Dabney Coleman. Coleman. Who's the new Dabney Coleman? Let's stop all conversation and let's figure this out, folks. Dabney. <laughs> Dabney. Mm. There is no one. Yeah, I don't know. There is one. No, it all. Nine to Five is such a great movie. That movie is hilarious. Underrated uh, comedy. I got to play Franklin Hart. Uh, what? See the poster there with Karen as wow. Violet. Oh, right oh, oh right man. Oh, um, you know, we were just basically we were would be at home yelling at each other, so we took it to the stage. And we sang about it. It was fun. <laughs> that's, that's what sure. might no, they hung me from the ceiling and everything. It was fun. Okay, that's a good call. That's, that's, a, that's a good call. That's, that's a good call. That Actually, we figured it bad. out. Next topic. That That's <laughs> perfect. That is. That is. <laughs> All right, guys. We're figuring some stuff out here. <laughs> 
Who are some of your favorite composers working today, besides uh, the big two? Like Henry Jackman, Daniel Pemberton, Junkie XL, Brian Tyler. Yeah. Oh, my God. I know, Adam, this is your thing, but just Pemberton is this into the Spider-Verse guy, right? Yes. Yes. Pemberton. That guy's awesome. Yeah. Pe mm. Pemberton, and then uh, I might be blanking on his name right now, the Man from Uncle soundtrack. Oh. Um, if only I had uh, a computer. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, and then, and then, whoever did Ant Man? Uh, God, I'm, I'm blanking on all of them. This is this should be my category, and I'm, for, I'm forgetting. Because I should. Uh, yeah. Uh, but that that uh, Into the Spider Verse that is the soundtrack of last year. My goodness! And I was lucky enough to do the Black Movie Soundtrack Show at the at the Hollywood Bowl, which is the history of black cinema through music that from the movies. <laughs> and I got to do a montage with full orchestra which was great because it had never been orchestrated before. Black Panther is an electronic score, I think, somewhat. And and, uh, and spider fairly electronic. So it was orchestrated for music, and there we did a montage. Uh, and please, somebody from Marvel hear this. Can we do Marvel in concert, please? I'll do the video. Uh, um, I, I just want to hear, That'd can you dig it from Iron Man 3 with an orchestra? Can you? <laughs> Iron Man three with an orchestra. Oh, wow. but it was a Black Panther into Spider Verse montage, and it was a barn burner. It was. It was. I'm very happy with that. So well, the other uh, Paul may have just looked this up too, but I just looked it up. You said you like Daniel Pemberton and the guy who did Man from Uncle. Turns out that's Daniel Same Pemberton. Daniel Pemberton. <laughs> okay, okay. That, that's why when I saw his name on Spider Verse, I was like, I wonder if this is good, and it's amazing. But yeah, Man from Uncle. If if you haven't heard Man from Uncle. That soundtrack is amazing. That movie's actually amazing. I love that. That was my favorite movie that year. That movie's good. I know I wasn't asked, but I'm just going to throw in Trent Reznor as well. Oh, yeah. Gosh. I was just That's listening to that today. Trent Reznor, uh, the, um, all the stuff he's doing with Fincher. So good. Oh, yeah. Social Network. Social Network. Right? That was yeah, his soundtrack. Growth really Dragon good too. too. Yeah, yeah, I just listened to that today. Yeah. Good yeah, stuff. He, he just did who, did, who did Ant Man, Paul? Ant Man. Christoph Beck. Ah, yes. I like that one. I don't know anything else he's done, but I love that soundtrack, man. Because it's rare to get a good, solid, hummable theme. You know, a lot, a lot of, a lot. And Paul's always said this: "Is like, ah, try and hum the theme from that movie when you talk about the scores." And you're like, "Well, yeah, you're right. It's kind of you, know, you can't." Hum yeah. yeah. Can you hum the theme from the Joker? No. But uh, <laughs> 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 walk around the house here. <laughs> Christoph Beck did Frozen and Frozen Two. Oh, did oh that is Christoph Beck. You're right. You're right. He yeah. Okay, I did. Look, yeah, that that I don't know those. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Wow, you guys, that's gonna wrap it up for us here on Chill to Action on this happy Monday. Woo! All right, but Adam and I are gonna stay on for another half hour. Yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep. Yeah. It's just gonna be Paul and Adam hanging out. So. Call the movie, guys. <laughs> Enjoy that. <laughs> big shout out. Big thank you. Everyone you know, with us in the chat tonight. Uh, it went late, went a little late. So we're glad that everyone is still here and hanging out with us. Welcome to the movie, guys. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, would, we would try and clock in a nice, efficient podcast for years. And it never quite happened. Always that 90 minutes. Yeah. Yeah, some people don't want to end, so that's actually true. They don't stop. <laughs> Sorry, so, uh, uh, Ken Napsok and Josh McCuga have a podcast the afternoons. And they're they're famous for their tangents. And uh, oh, okay. Andrew D. Milanta's wife, uh, Nikki Demi, she she draws like graphs of all their tangents that they go off uh, on. And graph stuff. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, that's that's you know when you have conversations like this or you know that's that's it's amazing to track the tangent. And the joke I always use from the movie guys is because you would be, we would be our old podcast. We would discuss the movies that were coming out that week. Now, some of those aren't always exciting. If you think of the three movies that would be coming out this week, you go, one you're excited about. Two is like, oh, I know someone in that. That third one, like, yeah. So we would go on these long tangents, and Paul would always end the uh, conversation. We, we, we would forget how far afield we've gone from you know whatever movie we're talking about. And then it would just come to this call, and Paul would go, so that's one for the money. <laughs> or whatever movie we're talking about. That's Doctor Strange. Anyway. Oh, that's Doctor Strange. Doctor Strange. We were just talking about who knows what. <laughs> one for the money. Nice pull on that. And, uh, that's Catherine Heigl. Great one. Like that. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. So that's date night. <laughs> that's date night. Oh, 
Oh, so that's that. this means war. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> Roxy Stryer loves that movie. Ro that is like Roxy Stryer, one of Roxy Stryer's favorite movies. This means oh, war. Yeah, this war. Uh, Who's in that? Chris uh, Pine and Tom Hard. And oh, Reese Witherspoon. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's Reese one of those big action comedies that you can tell they. They shouldn't do both. That, that movie shouldn't do. I can tell from the trailer. Oh, uh, you kind of probably should have picked either one. I don't think you're good at doing both these. Like when they go way over the top, you're like, "Let's blow up a car." As I've always said, like, beware any hundred thousand dollar joke. You know? Like, <laughs> yeah. It's not that bad. It is. That bad. Chris Adams says the Cinefanax will jump on for the second shift with the movie guys. <laughs> 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 these boys are gonna log off. Inside, gonna inside, inside baseball. Paul and I have been up for days doing that show. Like we're oh, yeah, super we've tired. Yeah. We're punch drunk now at this point. I shot all the, the Star Wars figure stuff, and then Adam edited the whole thing together. So he did a great job. So yeah. if no one knows what we're talking about, jump on over and see the free for all three point five. Yeah, That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Plug anything oh, else? You don't need to plug. Where can we find you? What podcast are you on? Where can we listen to you? All of that good stuff. Well, given my situation with Karen and everything, the movieguys.net is our website, but it has been a little light on new content. But, uh, you know, we did make that video with Drew after the Oscars with Video yeah. Drew. And then, yeah, uh, we're this doing three, something. This three we're doing something every month. Yeah. yeah. So there's stuff. I got interviews with indie filmmakers out there and a couple of articles. But uh, hopefully, now that I'm stuck indoors, there will be a lot more content. The movieguys.net. And it's at the movie guys everywhere on social. And, and frankly, I would suggest, because we've talked about it now, and Paul even recently took some of our old podcasts, even though they're from movies, and some of the jokes you heard in the, the 3.5, they're old movie guys jokes, because we would talk about the movies, as I said, that were coming out, and we do kind of a comedy monologue of descriptions of these movies, and I'll go back and, you know, again, it's something like One for the Money, like, I don't know what that movie is, but I guarantee you our review of it is hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> a preview of it, you know? I know. Like they... Then after a while, we would just get like, like, why are we spending so much time on the sequel to Diary of a Wimpy Kid? Yeah. Like, we just knew every movie that came out. <laughs> we talked about them all, and after a while, like, why are we the only ones who give a shit about this movie? Because yeah. <laughs> it's funny. So Yeah, because it's funny. Because <laughs> nobody goes to see all three movies that came out this week, but we're interested enough to look up what they're about and talk about it. You know? <laughs> all right. <laughs> hey, Tim Franco, get me on James Bonding. I've got, a, I've actually got a great concept uh, for that uh, for that podcast. Sweet, uh, for for an episode. Yeah. Oh, I, I know that's no joke. Adams talked about that show since we had Gourley on our on the movie guys. Uh, yeah. Ago. Oh. Oh, nice. In fact, there's the episode to go. If you go to our archives, go find the Matt Gourley one. The great thing about that is he hadn't done James Bonding yet. We only knew Jay Matt Gorley from Super Ego, which is a brilliant comedy troupe. Uh, and so we were there to talk about that and didn't even realize just how versed in movies he was. And that is, I swear, a, a, a sort of cousin pilot episode to James Bonding talking the whole time. Because once we realize, again, it's that mov movie guy's thing of like, a, oh, you like this? Well, let's go into it. Let's go deep dive. <laughs> it's, that's a really good episode. And it's like about two months before James Bonding. And all we talk about is James Bond. Nice. Yes. Movies, aren't they great, guys? They, are. <laughs> they, they, they don't stop making them. Yeah. They don't stop making them. <laughs> oh, hopefully they don't now. We'll see. Yeah, that is, that's true. it. But thank you all again, everyone in the chat. Thank you. For hanging out with us, Paul, Adam. We thank genuinely, you. genuinely appreciate your time. Uh, we love great. your characters on the showdown and everything that you've done for this community. Oh, thank, thank you, guys. That you are, all are continuing to do for this community. So genuinely, yeah. genuinely, thank you so much. Cool. Absolutely. Well, thank you. Thank you for being fans, and we'll 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 see you again soon, maybe here or maybe in person. Yeah, that'll be great. That'll be great. <laughs> That's <should be> <laughs> there he goes. His credit screen. <laughs> for everyone on the Call to Action Network, on behalf of everyone at the Call to Action Channel on Chill to Action, thank you all so much again. We'll see you next Monday. We'll see you this Wednesday for Schmo Bates. We'll see you on Sunday for Call Live, and for all of the other reactions that we have coming out this week. But for That's all of that. From all of us here, thank you so much. And as always, we salute, salute you. You. <laughs>